Alongside Terry Bowden, Texas still has a chance to get in the Big 12 championship game. Oklahoma would have to lose tomorrow. We know the winner of the next one is definitely going. They are Nebraska, Colorado. Both like to run the ball. Nebraska does it a lot better. All right, Nebraska Cornhuskers against Colorado with that win. Remember, they're number one in the BCS standing, so that vaults them perhaps to a Rose Bowl. These two gentlemen, the coaches, Barnett and Solich, up next. Seen here today in Boulder, Colorado. But you know, Nebraska's a heavy favorite. Colorado's optimistic. Are they equipped to handle the Huskers? Uh, Brent, I think so for two reasons. First of all, uh, Nebraska's played all their big games at home. Oklahoma at home. This is the first team as a road game that feels they could beat them, and I think that's big. Anything special for number seven, Mr. Crouch? When you play Nebraska, you're facing Eric Crouch. He's the one guy in college football that can beat you anywhere on the field. Any formation, whether he runs, pitches, or passes, or as we've seen, catch it. They may jab you with a pass game. They may jab you with a tailback. But the knockout punch is Eric Krauts. Let's go down now to Jack Arudu's coach, Frank Solich of Nebraska. Well, Brent, four of the last six times that this team has been here on the sidelines, on the first offensive play, they've scored. As we run out with Coach Frank Solich, Coach, what's the first play going to be? Well, uh, it's not going to be too exciting because there's going to be a bunch of plays after that. Uh, but we're, we're going to try to have a, a fake taking them one way and come back the other way with a play that we hope has a chance to get some yards. Jack. Good luck, Coach. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Brent. Nice try, Jack. <laughs> that was wonderful. Gary Barnett, his third year in Colorado, trying to return to dominance. sellout and I do mean a packed house and yes there is a lot of red Nebraska fans did find a way to get tickets to this one Colorado won the toss they have deferred Nebraska will handle the ball right away and can they do it again can they score on their first play from scrimmage Pat Brown number 25 will kick it off and awaiting it is another 25 that, of course, is Josh Davis, who needs only six return yards to set the all-time Nebraska single-season record. As Crouch, ready on the sideline, will come hustling out for their first play. Underway in Boulder. Will Davis bring it out? Yes, he will. The record is his. The all-time kick return leader. But they're short of the 20. Now, Jack Aru told you that four of the last six games in Boulder, now Nebraska has struck on the first play from scrimmage. Two years ago, it's Danny Alexander on the pitch, got the corner, 50 yards, touchdown, Nebraska. Keep this in mind. Colorado is focused on number seven today, Eric Crouch. In the past, the Huskers have pitched it. I can remember Amon Green catching the corner for a touchdown, too, here in Boulder. Thunder Collins in motion, fake and Crouch keeps it, rolls, they won't score this time because number 54, Sean Tufts, out of Engel in Colorado. In that offensive line, Mr. Pancake, you got served for number 77, Fonity, All-American at left guard. Aaron Diedrich, folks, we talk so much about Crouch. We overlook number 30, 1,000-yard rusher, leads the Big 12, certainly underrated. But the key man is number 7. Colorado determined to get the ball out of his hands as much as possible. Second down and 14. Straight ahead, 30, big hole, and he pounds it to the 22. And Michael Lewis, their great safety, makes the hit. Justin Bannon, a question about his health. How many snaps can he go? The defensive tackle spot. There was a big hole on that last play. The linebackers, they've got a crunch crouch all day long. That's their mission. We mentioned number 31. He's one of the best in the country, Michael Lewis. They'll move him up tight. They ain't been up in that box all day long looking for the run on third and four. Wrist of a motion right. Crouch looks in that direction. Crouch goes downfield. Incomplete wide. Thomas, three and out. 4% of Nebraska's passes go to four people. They're tight end, they're two tight wide starting receivers at Thunder College. Colorado has a bead on who Crouch wants to throw the ball to. Stop the option on first play, 
Now, all of a sudden, it's punt time. And now, Roman Hollowell, the nation's leader. There is Garrison, number 52. Had a bad snap against Kansas State. Colorado wants him to look left. They want him to block left all day. They picked up a tendency. Larson gets this one off, and now it's Hollowell, the nation's leader. He's at the 21-yard line. Gross can't get to him. He slips the first man. Runs laterally out to the 32-yard line. And Nebraska with good coverage on that. Hollowell is so tricky and dangerous now. And folks, two great offensive linemen, Gerard and Rogers, lead the way. They are definitely in charge of this large offensive line. Daniel Graham, a first round draft choice for sure, number 89. The man out of the gun is number four, Bobby Pesavento, the senior who transferred here from Miami of Ohio with Craig Oaks injured, moved back in the starting lineup. He's turned in several outstanding games. Straight on. Corlin Johnson's 27. He's the guy back the first carry. About three yards to the 35-yard line against this Husker defensive lineup. Chris Kelsey coming on. Colorado thinks he's the key man in that defensive front. As far as the linebackers are concerned, Jamie Burrow has become the hitman, number 48. A terrific secondary. They will play man to man, but can they block number 57? That will be the key. Kelsey gets down in his stance. Play fake Pesimo on the roll. He's got a sideline incomplete. Out of bounds. And they were using Hollowell down the sideline as the receiver. Pesavento. Pesavento in his last three game starters with an injured Craig Oaks is completing 71% of his passes as a starter. Graham is the trailer, but he goes deep and the ball is just let out of bounds. Colorado believes to throw the ball, the quarterback is going to have to move out of the pocket occasionally to avoid the pass rush. Bates is lined up against Kelsey. It's third down for Colorado. Slot receiver in the California passing attack. They break it wide right open, complete to the 40 yard line. They hit number 15, Matt Brunson, the senior from Inglewood, for 26 yards. Pesavento had time to throw the ball. When you have time, that means your running back is blocking on a blitz. Nebraska comes with the blitz, and this time, bang! Running back comes in there, makes the play. Bobby Purify makes it, and that's what allows Pesavento to throw the ball downfield. What we noticed about this Colorado team all week is the quiet confidence. The coaches and the players, they believe coming in. And it's Purify for a touchdown. Purify breaks open. He slowed up too early and got hit by Gross. When he slowed up, he was risking it, but he goes in for the touchdown. And it is 6-0, Colorado, Purify bolts 49 yards. It was almost like he thought the goal line was the two-yard line. You said the two guys, Gerard and Rodgers, those are the two guys that get the block. Brent, I think he was so open, he believed the whistle blew. He said, I can't be this open. He turns around and says, what's going on here? Now the extra point and the seven-point advantage. Jeremy Flores, the senior, adds the extra point. And we got a surprise for you. Nebraska comes in favored by 10 points. And the Buffaloes say, forget about it. We're going to be in this one all the way. And it was the handoff here to their number two back in the rotation. They go four deep at running back. Here's number two, the sensational Purify. It's seven nothing. Ready to add to that record, but Brawl may have different ideas. Remember, Davis gambled and didn't get back to the 20 yard line. He hangs another one beautifully right down by the goal line, about three yards in, and Davis is coming out. Well short again. Hey, Brown has been a key to this game. Two terrific kickoffs. Killian makes the stop. Now, number seven. How good has he been as the Nebraska quarterback? Folks, look at this. Since 99, this is 50% of their touchdowns. Rushed or passed for 76. This is why he could well be considered 
the leading candidate for the Heisman Trophy. This is a young man who has done it all in his four years, lost only five times. And now it's all uphill for Nebraska. They have not scored in the first quarter for about three straight games now. Play fake. Craig's going to go for Wistrom. Cutter incomplete. And Lewis was stuck in one on one. And Lewis gave him no daylight there. And Wistrom is very upset that Lewis was not called for holding on that play. Turned around, motioned to the referee that he was grabbing the whole way, but it ain't holding if there's no yellow flag. Just talk about Lewis as the emotional player of this defense and also say in the next sentence that he's the smartest football player on this team. He's going to have Crouch and Wistrom all game. They have forced Nebraska to spread the field over. And they're going to run deeper into the middle of that defensive line. Fumble! Loose ball still. Dire for it! The Buffaloes think they've got it! A tug of war. This would be huge if Colorado pulls it away underneath. Still no signal. Yes, Colorado's got it. Power play right up the gut. Dietrich, both hands on the ball for a while. Gets hit once, gets hit twice, and then right at the end of the play, that's a clean fumble. And it comes out, and Colorado's quicker to the ball. Tonote tries to get there, but he doesn't get it. Now Colorado at the 21-yard line for Barnett. We'll see what the game plan is coming in here. They've got a power back. They come back with Purify. Remember now, in Gerard and Rogers, 71 and 65, they've got two monsters in that offensive line. Terrific photo. They're going to put it up on first down. And they're going to jump in. Touchdown. Tight end. The tight end. Daniel Graham. Colorado strikes on a 21 yard touchdown pass. Solely to the Huskers are in deep trouble. Top of the corner right here. He's got Willie really Amos on the corner route right there. The safety has a man to man. Nebraska blitzing again. Beautiful route. Better throw. And Amos gets beat to the corner. And Pesavetto again right there. Matt Flores pounds in the extra point. Folks, we had to play five minutes. We're at five minutes into this game. And Colorado leads it by 14. And it was the fumble. Middle gets stripped by Strickland. It pops free. I'm not sure if it was Sneed. Yes, Sneed. Pounced on the ball. Sneed. 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 And here's the touchdown. Remember, he'll be the first tight end drafted, according to Gary Barnett. And there you can see why. A big timer into the end zone, and it's 14 0 Colorado. There's 142 years of coaching experience on Solich's staff. They will not panic. And again, Rome drives this one through the end zone. Let's take a look at what's going to decide this football game. Two teams, two even teams. Colorado believes they can win it. Both teams want to run the power game in this football game. Whoever does it the best is going to have a chance. You saw Purify already. Special teams breakdowns. Nebraska already got beat twice on the kickoff. And Nebraska needs to save fuel for the fourth. In the fourth quarter here in Colorado, they've been outscored the last two years, 38 to nothing. Thunder Collins checks into the backfield. Number one is the out of bounds. After the deep end fumble, it'll be Collins. And it's the fullback straight ahead of Jack Davies. So now what Nebraska will do when they're so good at it, they're so patient, this offensive line will block so well, they need to think just one at a time here against Colorado. There's so much emotion right now in this crowd. It is electric down there. That's where you get in trouble when you're playing, trying to play football against Nebraska. Everybody says assignment football, assignment football, try to play the quarterback, but you have to stop the power game first. High formation with... Collins play fake and Crouch is going to throw on the run. Incomplete. Underthrew Thomas a little bit. And 
And a reminder that tomorrow, ABC Sports Thanksgiving Feast presented by Siemens features two stellar games in prime time. Gary, look at this. Eight Eastern. We've got the rematch. Washington against Miami. And, of course, Washington beat Miami last year. Some of you will see the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame take on Stanford. What's your thoughts, Gary, about Washington Miami? Miami, I think they're the best football team in college football. Not so fast, my friend. This one's not yet over. Third down in the Huskers. Here's that option looking punch. No first down. Great play by Joey Johnson, the hot linebacker from San Antonio, Texas. Joey Johnson playing for Sykes, their injured middle linebacker. He's coming on. Crouch cannot get outside with the option. Davies is going to try to get outside and block, but he gets knocked off inside. And that allows Johnson to scrape and make the play. Now, again, they're going to make Garrison. They're going to put someone right on him. Last time they went return. This time it looks a little different alignment for Colorado. Let it go. Larson, the punt man. Coming in. Here's Hollowell. He's going to be out of bounds. Hollowell is out of bounds when he cut the ball. Well, ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Be you, nothing's better, Dr. Pepper. General Motors, together, let's keep America rolling. Burger King, home with a Whopper. And Sears, only Sears has the brand you want, the price you need. Sears, where else? How about Nebraska? They haven't scored in the first quarter in the last three games, and Colorado's got them on the run in this football game. Those 142 years of experience, they're going to need it in this football game. It certainly looks that way. Zero five, still in at running back. After his bolt for the first touchdown of the game. Here he is on a little delay, sealed up by the Husker defense right now. We got an injury. Let's check in now with Jack Aroo. Brett, you may see more of this man, Bobby Purify, because Cortland Johnson, who has really been the hoss in the rotation for Colorado, has suffered a strained MCL. They are working on it now. They have listed him as doubtful, but he wants to get back in the game and at least get a few snaps. He has never beaten Nebraska. He's one of the seniors, Johnson is. And, of course, that's why Purify was on the field when he bolted for the touchdown. I think Pesavano does he's got him and it was a whistle. Whistle on the player, obviously prior to the snap as they stopped it. The snap occurred. Ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Remain second So down. Bobby Pesavento, we'll call him the Marco Polo of quarterbacks. I'll <laughs> steal a Dick Vitale line. And look at this, out of Lake Central High School in Indiana, on to Oxford to Miami of Ohio. Then he went to a junior college at Fort Scott, Kansas. Been here to Boulder. Thought he was going to start under the bench. And now he has come back because of the injury suffered by Craig Oaks. And he has been efficient. And he's kept himself ready when he got his chance. So nice to see a youngster who does not give up. Never, ever give up. Second down. Here's Pure Fly. Penalty fly. Penalty fly. Pure fly. And a foot race for the end zone. But let me reiterate. The umpire threw the penalty flag. Frequently, that's holding. And this one is going to come back. Brent, that might have been holding on the defensive line, but where are the Nebraska linebackers? That's two sprints holding to the end zone. On the no, it's on the offensive. Three yard penalty and four from the spot of the foul. Nine seconds and out. I mean, they're going to get holding inside here. But where are the guys back here, the linebackers? What is happening to the flow of Rittrell and Bird? Just running right by. Kelsey goes too deep for Pesavento, and look at that. Holy cow. You know, I talked to a coach in the Big 12 earlier this morning, and I said, you know, Coach, being here, it seems to me that maybe Colorado matches up a little bit better against Nebraska. And he said, absolutely, this is going to be the toughest game of the year because of the style that Barnett has. He will run directly at Nebraska, and they will block it, and they will use short passes to keep Solich and the Huskers honest. He said, I think Nebraska's in for a dogfight up there. And the play-action pass. When you can run the play-action pass, and that's what Pesavetto's done to buy some time. Slot to the left. Three wide on second and long after the hole. They nullified the touchdown. Brown 
who transferred from Northwestern, the third running back. And here at Folsom Field on an overcast Saturday afternoon. And here is the first touchdown of the game. Bobby Purify off the bench, took it home. Then Nebraska turned it over, a Diedrich fumble. And after that, it was the Huskers' great tight end, Graham from Pesavento, and it's 14-0. Nebraska linebackers Jamie Burrow is overrunning the play. Colorado is cutting back and getting yards. Holloway the slot man. Pesavino looking for him. Got him back outside incomplete. And Colorado forced the punt. Hold on, we've got a penalty flag thrown downfield. And there's a question of it's just a warning for the sideline warning on Nebraska. First sideline warning of the half. Sideline warning, the sideline for Nebraska too close to the field. That's getting to be like an illegal <laughs> deity. Yeah, exactly the official right. ought to just go over to the coach and tell him to get him back. You gotta stay off the white. That's almost impossible. So Mark Mariscal puts on now one way, folks. One way for Nebraska to quickly come back in this game is to block a punt or have a punt return by Gross for a touchdown. See if special teams can react. Remember, he hauled one back against Kansas State. He is very dangerous. They've had about 800 yards, return yards of punts Nebraska has. They'd love to block one right now if they can. Maris Kell will try to get it out of there. He's out of Tallahassee, Florida. He's punting now for Colorado, standing on the buff 10-yard line. Perfect snap. The Gunners trying to get down. No return, but it will be Nebraska's ball in their best field position of the day by far. They've started at the 17, 13, and 20. Now they'll start at the 42. Timeout. Our Thanksgiving feast, presented by Stevens, continues on ABC Sports. Colorado, a 10-point underdog, shocking Nebraska, but it's very, very early. And the Cornhuskers now with some maneuverable field position. Coming out for the 42, Eric Crouch, following that 33-yard punt. We'll see what he could do. Thunder Collins still in as the eye back. John Gibson. A wide receiver along with Wilson Thomas. Here's McDonald. In Thunder for Rich Garrett, Eddie Garrett. He nodded what Nebraska wants to do. And you look at these two teams and what they want to feature. Nebraska about a couple things right here. Both of them, you got an equal power and option. You got to stop both. Colorado wants to run the ball right at him. And Brent, they've been successful doing that. That's why the rest of that offense will work for Colorado. We'll chart it all day. Cornelson, Wistrom, Hassebrook all check in. Three substitutions for the Huskers who go back to the shotgun. Conscious swallow didn't get anything. He was taking it out all the way in the middle. Now Doom and Brayton swallow him. This is really that quarterback ice throw. Fonancy's going to come behind. It's just a tailback of isolation. You come around. Polk is the guy that pulls this time. Pit blocking, and that pit right now is being controlled by the Buffaloes. Eric Crouch does not have positive yardage yet. Is three runs, minus four, no game, no game. Here's your third down now, and Crouch back in the gun. Colorado's puts it from the outside. Fire a beautiful catch by Gibson, and it's going to be close for a first down, wherever they spot it. And I don't think the umpire gave him a good spot, ladies and gentlemen. I think he moved it back on the spot. He's definitely short. They're going to be short. Let's see now if Solich says we're down 14 early. Do we still play field position or do we go? They're going to call a timeout. They're going to talk about it over here. They're just across midfield. This isn't a bad deal. You can huddle up. They won't know what they're doing. You can run on the field. So, Nebraska, number one in the BCS. Let it know, from the but shot. still, they cannot get the spot. Let's watch what the umpire does here, Gary. Yeah, slant from the option right there. There's Gibson. He catches the ball. Does his knee come down? 
I don't know where the ball was, but I think he's short of the 48. I think that was pretty close to being right now. Nebraska is on the sideline. They can run out with their punt team or their short yardage team to make the first down. This forces Colorado to stay in defense stay. We'll see what they do. So Vince Oakridge on the other side, the defensive coordinator, co-defensive coordinator here of the Buffaloes. And obviously Nebraska can go for it. Why not? Option here's Crouch. He slipped. Didn't get it. Colorado football. Colorado football as Crouch slips. Remember the bulk of the season, eight games for Nebraska has been at home. Davies, the fullback, is going to come out. Crouch is going to try to come inside of him. Instead of staying wide and following the fullback, he cuts inside. The torque of the play slips him down short. Another negative play for Crouch. Bobby Purify, number 42, the sophomore from Colorado Springs, is back in at tailback. Three running backs already used by the Buffaloes, and remember their starter, Cortland Johnson, out with a knee injury. A short field to work with. Graham, the tight ends on the right side of the formation. It's double tight. It's a play action pass. Hit off the release. Graham is out in the foot race. And Graham heading for the end zone. Graham out of bounds, just short of it at the one yard line. Daniel Graham down the far side. They lined up double tight and brought it clear across the formation. You talk about a team that's ready. Wow. You want to know the West Coast offense? Here it is. One coming this way, one coming the other way. A little pick inside for the tight end. Delay. There it is. Deion Booker's got a man to man. Peeks into the backfield. Look at the straight arm right there. And then he turns it on. He's earning a dollar, big dollars, every time he catches the ball. Craver saved the touchdown. Now they line up with Brown as the power back. The first half couldn't get there. And that, of course, is Brandon Drum, the junior from Alaska. Daniel Graham is going to come inside. Gets into it, comes underneath, a little bit of a pick. Booker getting nosy in the backfield on the fake, comes back, and then the big guy. Strong, good hands, smart, and he can run. Neiman checks into the backfield. Chris Brown is the tailback. He bobbled it a little bit, then kept on driving for the end zone. They got hit on that pass play previous to Graham. The floor is. It's perfect. Following Pesamento's first rushing touchdown of the season. And if you just joined us, folks, that's not a graphic error. Colorado has jumped the number one team in the BCS standing. They have thrown the whole chase up for grabs early. But now, Barnett who came into this game saying he wanted to be real calm as Pesavento hurt his shoulder. Yep. He's asking for treatment back there as he went in. Always the danger when you send a quarterback into the middle on a quarterback sneak. Might be a pinch nerve, and if they have to take him out, Gary, who comes in? I think Robert Hodge will come in at this point in the game. He can hand the ball off, they'll give him a little bootlegs. He's the backup junior college transfer. Craig Oaks might come in, there's Hodge, might come in late in the fourth quarter if they need him, but right now, here's the pass to Graham previously, and see if he got his arm whacked as he let it go. Throws the ball, he waits, he waits, he waits, and just as he lets it go, he gets driven into the ground. And that's usually what happens. Get that right shoulder driven into the ground, and that's usually when you get it bumped. This time, breaks free. 40-yard line, in a foot race. 
midfield. Down and out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Bringing it out from the goal line for 74 yards officially. Special teams can turn it around so fast. This time, finally, the Hornhuskers decide to block somebody. Not going to run many back if you don't block one of those guys coming down. Get outside, run with it, and Gibson puts Nebraska in a position to put some points on the board. But the story of this game so far has been the Colorado defense stifling Eric Crouch and the Nebraska offense. Crouch keeps it, battles his way for two or three yards. Now let's go back, following Pesavento being tackled on the Graham. I want you to watch Pesavento as he bobbles the snap. He got it back. He then battled in and took a blow right on the shoulder as he dove for the end zone. It is now second down for Eric Crouch and the Huskers. Collins checks into the backfield along with Diedrich. The fullback's confused. Jump Davies, now he's set. Second down, and they're going to bring Collins around. The fake, Deidre, middle, opens, and he's to the 12. First down, we check in with Jack Aru, Jack. Brent, we're watching Bobby Pesavano right now warming up. His shoulder doesn't look bad at all. He told his coach, position coach, he was ready to go back in. One of the reasons why this defense is playing so well for the Buffaloes is the scout team quarterback. It's a name you may remember. Zach Colvin, who used to be the starting quarterback here, transferred for two weeks. He got up in their grill and played Eric Crouch all week against the number ones, so I gave him some attitude. He certainly did, Jack. Crouch trying it again. And he is having trouble with his footing and his pulling guard that time. I think Sean I have noticed both teams slipping here, Gary. Yeah, they have. Sean Tufts, I think, got him on the ankle, though, Brent, just reaching out because I think Eric would have just pranced into the end zone. They're running a few more options for Eric Kraut. They have to get him some big plays, and he's the guy that will give big plays to this offense. Bowling checks in as a tight end. And Nebraska brings Davies out. They send Thomas to the right, Gibson to the left. They face a second down from the 11-yard line. John Bowling, who just checked in, the junior from Lincoln. Missed him wide open. Got to make that play. Chance to win the national championship. Your tight end's wide open. Get you down to the first down marker at least. And Eric Crouch throws wide. This is third down, and obviously, if the Cornhuskers don't get close, they'll settle for a field goal attempt down here. But they really want a touchdown. Trailing by three touchdowns. Here's your third down. Thomas, the basketball players, out to the right. Diedrich, he's the eye back. Davies, the fullback. Perfect touch. Look at in zone. High. Incomplete. Wistrom was double teamed. They bracketed him beautifully with Robinson behind him and Lewis in front of him. It was perfect. Michael Lewis read this beautifully. Coming across, bootleg pass. Wistrom's going one way, coming back the other way. Looking all the way for it. And two guys, Lewis having the quarterback half the time and Wistrom half the time. And so far, he's been perfect in his coverage. Josh Brown, the junior from Oklahoma. A 20 is on the board. So Nebraska on the scoreboard with 3.26 to go in an electric opening quarter here in Boulder, Colorado. Third and long, very difficult to run a bootleg pass. There's Wister by Lewis right there. You see the great coverage in the back of the end zone. Really nothing for Eric Crouch to do but try to stick it in there and perfect defense again. Colorado believes, they believe, and that's more than half the battle. Jack, I assume we're gonna see Pesavento. He's got his helmet on, eh? Well, Brent, he wants to go back in. The athletic trainer for Colorado thinks that he has suffered a very slight, and I emphasize slight, separation of the shoulder. Gary, as you and Brent alluded to, that's what you put yourself into when you put your quarterback down low to try and score short. So there are 
Colorado's first four possessions, folks. Would you believe it? Three touchdowns. And they would have scored here if they hadn't had the holding penalty up front. He Good almost raised it in there. They have controlled the line of scrimmage. Jerome and Rodgers have done a job, and Graham is magnificent. Gary, what surprises you the most? I think the Nebraska linebackers. They've been out of sync. They're overrunning plays. They have to stop the run. Well, we'll see how they do on this side now. Now remember, Pesavento had his helmet back on, and he'll be coming out. And let's remind you about Monday Night Football. This could be a good remember a year ago, folks. Warwick Dunn, Marshall Falk, Marshall Falk, Warwick Dunn. It can't get any better than that. Buccaneers and the Rams, Monday Night Live, 9 Eastern time. Pesavento brings the offense back out. He's a warrior, folks. A survivor, a kid that wouldn't quit. Here's the handoff now to Purify. The middle wide open again, and Purify to the 35-yard line. And Gary, there's your point. I Where are the linebackers? I don't get it. It's simple misdirection. Simple. I mean, this is nothing outrageous. Tailback takes a step one way, comes back the other way. Where are these linebackers going? They're overrun. Look at Burrow. Way out of the play over here. No linebacker play. You have to make those stops if you're a middle linebacker. 44 yards. And, folks, Colorado has rushed for better than 100 yards in the opening quarter. And Nebraska for only 35. And we have a player down, and that's DeJuan Gross. DeJuan Gross who does such a nice job at corner. But when you look at Colorado, Balance also means a lot. You mentioned they ran for 101, Brent. They've also thrown for 96, and that is right on par. All year, this Colorado team has run an average of 214 a game and passed an average of 215 a game. Balance is the name of this offense. So Bobby Pesavento, the youngster who didn't give up, and we ask him, why didn't you give up after you got benched? It's not like I was backing up a bad quarterback. You know, I never doubted myself. I always kept high confidence in myself. I just worked hard, whether it was in the weight room, on the practice field, in the meeting rooms. I was working hard, and finally my opportunity came, and I just took advantage of it. He and Craig Oaks are the best of friends. Pesavano realizes how talented Oaks is, and it's a combination that has worked out beautifully for Barnett. And one thing you've got to give Gary credit for is the way he brings personalities together. First down and 10. Here's Pesavero out of the backfield. It's Colin Johnson who's back in the game. Johnson for seven yards. He's the best receiver of the running backs. Portland Johnson, the tight end position. A little bit of a change up here already for Nebraska. Shane Lee, the, look at that man, linebacker on the tight end right there. That's a tough matchup. Play at the line of scrimmage and run all over the field for that guy. I'm sure Sean Watson, the coordinator for Colorado, has made note. Second down. Brown, the ball carrier that time. And let's remind you, now the winner here will play again next Saturday night against either Oklahoma or Texas for the conference crown and an automatic BCS bid. The Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship next Saturday. It's live at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time. And wouldn't it be a story if these Buffaloes made it after losing their opener to Fresno State and being vilified that man was almost run out for a play call that resulted in an interception. Third down. Again, Brown, the power back, pounding the middle of this Nebraska defense to the 11 yard line. And the Cornhuskers are going to have to show up with some tacklers at 16 more yards. And Barnett's offensive line is crushing Nebraska. Well, Big 12 is in shock right now. This offensive line, as you mentioned it, Page, Bates, Gerard, Rogers, Lucier, even Graham have been blowing up a proud defense of, of Nebraska, giving up only 93 yards rushing all year a game. And look what they're doing today. On the left side, our two first-round draft choices on this formation, Gerard and Rodgers. They're running that direction. Touchdown! Their fourth touchdown 
of the opening quarter. The calmness that Barnett has exuded all weekend. He said the one thing I want to do against Solich of Nebraska is make sure I keep these players calm. I don't want them too hyper. There'll be no one to rock these speeches by me. Another Northwestern transfer, Wayne Lucerne this time, number 78, gets up, gets on the linebacker, and makes the block. And Flores pounds in his fourth extra point of the quarter. One more look at the center this time. Brown's a Northwestern guy. Watch the center get the middle linebacker. Again, overrunning the play. The seer makes the snap, rubs out, and just walls that middle linebacker past the play. You cannot be over aggressive. You have to play inside out, and Colorado is taking advantage of it right now. So a Northwestern block and a Northwestern ball carrier. Look at that. Right up the gut against the proudest defense in college football. And do I hear the cheers down in Gainesville right now? Do I hear some people around the country getting excited? How about, get Knoxville, Tennessee? How about out of Eugene, Oregon? How about in all of those spots where those teams are chasing? Number one or number two? Miami with a big one tomorrow night on ABC against Washington. And doesn't that loom huge now, especially if Barnett and the Buffaloes can keep it up. Coach Barnett did one of the great jobs that I've ever seen when he coached Northwestern all the way to the Rose Bowl. Never in my lifetime did I expect the Wildcats to reach the Rose Bowl. That man can flat out coach. I said to Coach Barnett, after you lost that horrible game to Fresno and got second guessed up and down Colorado, what did you do to keep this team together? We didn't read anything. We didn't listen to anything. We just held on to each other and, and uh, looked within that room where everybody was and said, this is where our strength is and this is who we can count on. I can't count on anybody else. Now let's go. And that's what we did. That's the way it is in sports. And the one thing Barnett did at Northwestern was bring the players together. It was a tightly knit group, and they are the same here in Boulder. First down and 10 now. A stun Nebraska. Thunder Collins looks for Daylight. And the black shirts of Colorado jump in as Killian, the linebacker, hits him. And look at the play chart. It is not pretty. Remember, this last drive was following the kickoff return down the plus territory. Could only get three points out of it. Eric Crouch has been stymied. Nothing from Crouch in this game. And that Colorado defense, when they can shut down Brent, the running game with the front four, and the option game with Lewis, that's a nice, nice group. Second down and seven. Joey Johnson again. I really think Eric Crouch missed this one. He had the block to cut inside. He got a little fancy on the option again, trying to get too much out of the play. He had a block on the linebacker Johnson. He could have just gashed it inside for an easy first down. Look at that, folks. I've never been around that number with number seven. Seven times and no yards to show for it. Here it is, third down now. Thunder Collins, the eye back. Nebraska, 0 for 4 on third down. The option, the pitch. Collins has got it. Nothing but daylight. The cut. And it rams into the 40 yard line. Nebraska rolling 23 yards by Thunder Collins. Now you wonder if Frank Solich has finally found a formation that he can get his quarterback down the line to pitch the ball. So far, with wide receivers now, have a little different look from this Colorado defense. Eric gets to the end man on the line of scrimmage right here, pitches it, and that's just like a beautiful sweep call as we get to the end of the first quarter. Maybe Nebraska has found a formation. It is arguably the most shocking first quarter in this college football season. 
Conrado has jumped over number one, BCS Nebraska. The score 28, way back in the game. Twenty-eight to three, Gary Do you ever think you would see a Nebraska defense shredded like that on one quarter? No, I really haven't. I thought maybe you could throw the ball to do that, but I've never thought you'd be able to run inside the tackles to shred them like that. A tremendous, I would say, effort from that offensive line. I don't want to say game plan. You never dream you're going to run that many yards right up the gun against them. I mean, wow. So Nebraska will open the second quarter in Colorado territory from the 41, and Crouch is going to throw. Goes Worcester. The five and number 31 Lewis is all over Worcester. We were told by Barnett and the staff that Lewis is a big time safety. And man, were they right about this. Still doesn't look to me like Worcester is 100%. I remember him just outrunning people. Lewis is a great player, but since he was injured that week before Texas Tech, Brent, Tracy Worcester has caught one pass in the last four football games. Here's second down and 10 for Crouch. They're keeping it in the middle. There's his first positive. Gain, and it's to the 36-yard line with Walrus. Quarterback ISO. Quarterback ISO again from the shotgun. Again, it looks like Nebraska's already going to their wide formations, their split formations. That is not what they come to when they like to run. Totally, yeah, it's cold. Yeah. 28 to 3 on the scoreboard. Colorado. Hoping to make it to the Big 12 championship game. The corners are soft. Third down. Watch a straight drop. Juggle incomplete. And again, it was the hit in the secondary. Roderick Sneed, number 26, out of Mesquite, Texas. John Bowling coughed this one up before he got hit. He might have felt that one coming. But Eric Crouch threw a good ball here and passed up Quistra for an easy first down and went down a little farther to Bowling. That's a drop pass. Crouch and the Huskers will go on fourth and five. I think you got to go for it. Trailing, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You gotta go for it. I wouldn't mind if they burned the timeout. Which is exactly what they're gonna do. They talk about what they want to do here. Colorado 28, Nebraska 3. 35 and 5 as a starter. Lost twice as a freshman. Once his sophomore year. Twice as a junior. Colorado's never beaten him. He's unbeaten this year. And he's on the red circle. Here comes that end of the round play that they like. So it works for a first down that time. Illegal formation on the offense. Fewer than seven players on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. So now it's an entirely different play after the penalty. play coming out of the play, the timeout, they go with the option, pitch, try to pick it up, it works, but it's just a simple miscue, an unforced error. Nebraska lines up in the formation wrong, and they're going to have to punt the ball. So Larson, standing on the Nebraska 45. So the fake by Hollowell works. Hollowell works. And it'll come out on the 20. Well, we mentioned that 35 and 5. Crouch has won 35 games in his career. Only three quarterbacks in NCAA history have made more. Our Aflac trivia question. Name the three quarterbacks. One of them I know you know. Come on. If you get all three, you're a football genius. One I know. I'm going to give folks a hand. <laughs> One of them eventually coached the Oakland Raiders. Okay, that's the end of the hits. First down and 10 now. The best of the Buffalo. They're mostly a fullback. And they run behind him with 25 to the 25-yard line. Five more yards and draw. 
Tom opens it up. Well, folks, here's one you're going to want to watch because look who's back. In the Skins game, it's none other than Mr. Woods himself. Tiger Woods. What's a Skins game without him? That's tomorrow at 4.30 Eastern. And then you come back for the back nine, and there will be $200,000 on the 18th hole. Brent, how, how about for Colorado? Just 17 plays for 238 yards. Second down play fake. Pesavano's got two on the run. Graham, the tight end again. He scored one touchdown. He set up a second. And now he's near midfield. Number 89 for 23. Four yards on the day. Bootleg pass, one way going the other. He runs right by the middle linebacker, Jamie Burrell, that time. He's got the crossing man in that play action pass. And this is big time. I love tight ends in offense. And Colorado is keeping a blend all game. First down and 10, and now they run a purified right side. He boots free. Purified to the 35 yard line. That's 17 more yards of offense for Colorado. And Nebraska must be shell shocked by now. They're completely off balance with this balanced attack. Purify goes over 100 yards. It's only the second back this season to gain 100 yards against this Nebraska team. And remember, he had a 78 yard touchdown called back because of holding. First down and 10. College football fans have to be stunned. Pesavino. Presentation of college football brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Be you nothing's better, Dr. Pepper. Chevy trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road, and Aflac. Ask about it at work. Our setting in Boulder, Colorado, one of the loveliest campuses in the United States. Fans are shoehorned in for this day after Thanksgiving special. Deidre is the eyeball. Nothing doing against the middle of the front. Well, we ask you the athlete for the question. Eric Crouch has won 35 games at Nebraska. Only three quarterbacks in NCAA history have won more. And here they are. There he is, folks. Did you get it? Sean Rouch. 
One time Georgia star back in the book, Rick Leach, did a great job at Michigan, won 38 times, and the all time leader in wins. Peyton Manning, Tennessee. Gary Daniels was all over Manning. <laughs> and Crutch. Uh, I think I knew Leach too. I didn't know the first one. <laughs> I didn't either, that was about that one. Second down. There's the flare pass to Thomas. And he battles for about four yards. Wilson Thomas. Will, let's check in with John Thomas. I bet John at uh, John Saunders. I'll bet uh, John that Terry Bowden picked this upset, right? He was all over it today, right, partner? He actually said it was going to be a close game. Didn't expect it this way. Burger King update. Texas, Texas AM. and Mark Ferris. Everett Walls picks it off and goes out of bounds. That really just sealed the victory in a game where there wasn't a lot of offense. 21 to 7 as they add one after that. As for back to you, you've got all the offense you can handle, Brent. Hey, John, get a little tea. Put some honey in it, my friend, and you'll be all right in a couple hours. Here comes Cox. Life is incomplete. And it's Thomas again. Close to midfield as Crouch delivers a strike. You know, Gary, what's interesting about Eric Crouch undergoing shoulder surgery in each of the last two years, and they've all said, the coaches, and Crouch included, he's throwing much better than uh, a year ago. Well, he helps to be healthy, you're right. I think Frank Solich has run the option less this year coming into this game to keep it healthy, but considering that schedule that Nebraska had stacked so much in their favor with all those home games, he had the luxury of doing it. That's a 25-yard game for Crouch. Here comes that end around, and back to Crouch, who's going to throw it. There's a tight end. It's Worcester. And out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. Michael Lewis forces him out. But off the double reverse, Crouch throws for 24 more yards. So look what Nebraska has been forced to do. A drop back shotgun pass for Crouch, it's Thomas. And now a double reverse, hand the ball off, pitch it to the wide receiver, throw it back to the quarterback, and get it downfield to the tight end. I mean, they go the whole playbook to try to get yards. They still only got points, but they're trying to get yards against this tough Colorado defense. They're obviously trying to occupy number 31, Lewis, who's been so good about pressing the line and then dropping back. First and 10, Tebert runs into his own line and finally gets thrown aside by Marquise Harris. Nebraska again out of sync. Well, our first and 10 this quarter is brought to you by Chevy Trucks. And uh, this time the... The line would be at the 17-yard line. You can see it there. You said it, Brent. He ran right into the back of his own guy, Dietrich, just outside the screen. The block could have come right in here. And watch if he couldn't get outside this. This was right in the back of his guy. Here's second down. And in the middle. Touchdown, Steve Crewell. The freshman fullback, 24 yards, and Nebraska scores for the first time today. You play option, you play tailback, and all of a sudden they slip it to that fullback. And Freewald, the inside play to the fullback, just slip it to him very quickly. Watch the action of the quarterback and the tailback going this way, and then boom, a little misdirection with Freewald right behind it to put points on the board. Point now. Critical, and uh, that one added by Josh Brown. Colorado saw their misdirection plays. Now Nebraska gives you a little bit of a misdirection play. Handoff all the way. There's no read there. It's just play action. You hand the ball after the fullback, and he scampers. Now you would say Nebraska's in this game, but folks, we've got to see something for the defense. I stop them once, don't they? They stopped them once in this game, and that's because they had a holding penalty to back it up first and 20. We've got to find our friends from Nebraska and ask them, when's the last time someone hit Nebraska for more than 300 yards in the first half, in the first half of a football game? Charlie McBride, he's probably beside himself oh, yeah. in retirement, Charlie saying, come out. on. Charlie went out to rake leads or something. He can't watch the rest of this one. Clyde Sorrell and Hollowell go back deep for this game. And it's a dead. Bring it out on the 20-yard line. And outside for a 
Pacific Line game on summary. Well, we've talked about the defense. They've given up 154 rushing yards in this game. They've also given up 160 passing yards. They have been shredded in the middle. Tremendous job, but I still say the linebackers are overrunning plays. So Colorado attacking first the two defensive tackles, Slutton and Clanton. Five man line, they take it out two of the linebackers. And Marcus Houston into the first time today, and he runs to the 24. So here's the highly touted Marcus Houston out of Denver. And here are the possession charts. And you can see six possessions and five touchdowns for the Buffaloes. Phenomenal. And, and the, the last two, 80 yards back to back in only five plays. Almost unheard of against this Nebraska team. Looking forward is Pesavino to watch in some more Marcus Houston. They say that Purify has moved ahead of him. We're going to try number 21, and nothing doing. Closing was Des Moines Adams. Coming hard for the backside there. Change up by Craig Pohl, defensive coordinator. He's going with five defensive linemen against that offensive line. He's only got two linebackers in the game now. He's going to try to win. One, two, three, four, five. All of them up there just running the ball. Kelsey to one side, Adams to the other, and they're trying to win and retake that line of scrimmage. Good pickup, partner. That's a big change for Craig. Third down. And his movement. Now the flag. Pesavino fires. Out of bounds, but the linesman says no. Play is nullified. But it's a throw. movement down there. That was a nice <laughs> throw by Pesavino. Wasn't that? It was a great throw. I mean, Gross had great coverage there. McCoy got that stuck right in his hands from that far away. Before the snap occurred, ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty, the main start down. Now we go to third down, and you would think that they would be looking for Daniel Graham with Scott Shanley having watched him. And there is Daniel Graham, folks, here today. Three passes, 93 yards, and one touchdown. About it's a, beyond a shadow of a doubt. You'll be the first tight end drafted. <laughs> Lucky I got five years to pay. <laughs> and Colorado is forced to punt. Now, this is a big stop for this defense. And Gary Daniels had picked it up immediately that Craig had gone to the five defensive linemen. And now it will be up to Colorado to adjust off of that. You would think they're going to have to throw a little bit more. You don't like to throw when you're up 35 10. Barnett will have to talk about it. With his offensive staff, he has a bright young man upstairs, and Sean Watson, his offensive coordinator, he brought him here from Northwestern. Colorado's Someday, been, Sean will be a head coach. Yes, he today. will. Colorado's been stopped twice. Both times, they had penalties to hurt their drive, or actually stopped their drive. All right, Maris Gill, now let's see if the Huskers come after him. They want to return. Here's Gross from the 34. But he was out of bounds at the 42-yard line. So we'll take a break. Folks, this is not a mistake. Colorado 35, Nebraska 10. Timeout. There are as many NFL prospects on this Colorado team as almost any team I've been around. You're looking at one right here. Number 31, safety Michael Lewis. He's fast enough and hits hard enough to play inside and outside in this game. Crouch now bringing it for the corner. Crouch across the 45 on his best run from scrimmage of the day. Now we asked Lewis about coming into this game, the mental approach to Nebraska. We feel like, you know, last couple of years we've been coming into this game too emotionally charged. You know, we want to channel that emotion and come out more focused in there and plan for each other. And that's exactly what they have done here, leading 35-10. But now, after that 15-yard run, 
the Huskers are starting to bring some offense. Last drive, it was trick plays. Now they come back with a little blood and butter. Now they line up in the arm. Now it's coach on that option. Is the pick to Thunder is out at the 36-yard line. Gary, this is more what we expected to see from Nebraska. I don't think there's any doubt that the spread formations have loosened up this Colorado defense. Now the bread and butter offense of Nebraska is starting to emerge. The score doesn't help them, 35-10, but you peck away. One drive at a time, one gain at a time, one first down at a time, and then you put points on the board and look up at halftime to see where you are. The goal here is to get the 35-17 and get the defense to hang on against the Colorado running backs. Second down now. Here's that base high again. Thunders hit in the backfield by Justin Bannon, the senior from Fair Oaks, California. So, here in Boulder, Colorado, on a Friday afternoon, Colorado shocking Eric Crouch. They have dominated the line of scrimmage, and Crouch has been unable to break free. His best run of the game for 15 yards. That slip was on fourth down and less than a yard. And now Thunder Collins shaking up. Yep, on that last play that you got hit in the backfield, coming around, man, and just put him down, and he stayed down. Looks like it is left leg, knee, ankle, something like that. There he is, 97, hits him in the backfield, rolls. Usually they fall on that ankle, what happens there, and boy, did he take it. There's no, there's no question about Colorado's desire. Remember, folks, in each of the last two years, each of the last two years, they've gone to the last play and lost both games. Barnett missed a field goal in here a couple years ago, and they lost in overtime. Then a year ago, they lost to Nebraska on a field goal in Lincoln. Rolls hard right. I don't think he's got the first down. It's going to be very close. It looked good. It looked good to me. He landed on his back just past the first down. He got it. You're right. Good eye up here, buddy. Again, one of those things that Eric Crouch does so well as a weapon in offense. Look, he's struggling today. There's no doubt about that. His Buffaloes are ready for him. But he continues to peck away. Isolation plays, option plays, quarterback draws, quarterback iso must still stop him. Side check, he's got one pass, he's coming around. The fake from Deidre keeps it, breaks free, touchdown! Nebraska's back in it. They fake the end around beautifully that time for 32 yards. I saw Zajcek out there, one of his specialties. He started back around. They bit on Zajcek, and Diedrich turned it in. And Barnett said, oh, no, here we go again. You're right. And big Finote that time, number 77, Big Sir. He got a pancake on that one. Mr. Sir, Big Sir. Big Sir, sir. Like I like Big Sir. I like your nickname. <laughs> big Sir. <laughs> and the extra point by Josh is good. Frank Solich is Come on now. No good. No good. They missed the extra point. It's a beautiful kick. It just didn't go between the posts. I thought it was just like, <laughs> it looks so good. And Solich can't believe it either. Here's the touchdown play. They fake the play coming around. Pinote's right here. He goes outside. I don't know if we catch all of it, but you'll see the play. The fake reverse one way. Diedrich, watch number 77, he finds him, and it's Lewis right there that gets it. Two future NFL players watch him on the ground. There he is. Big surf gets a pancake. So Fonati, one of the finest offensive linemen in the country, blows it open. The determined look on his face. The young man's only a junior in Nebraska, hoping, of course, that uh, he comes back for his senior year. How about Lewis? He says, you know what? I'll handle the tight end, and I'll take the quarterback, but I don't want that guy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great point. <laughs> Where did he come from? Wistrup's okay. Crouch is okay. I don't want that guy anymore. Short. Here's Hannah. He's coming for the 15. To the 30 yard line. Let's see now if Sean Watson is going to have to go to more of a passing game early in downs as Craig Ball has changed up his defense to stop that running game with five defensive linemen. 
Pesavino has played brilliantly in this game. 71% of his passes in the last three starts. Look at that. 75% in this game. But here comes Eric Crouch. He's making plays. He's got the ball every snap. Let's take another look at this uh, missed extra point. You folks at home probably sound a lot better than I did up here. <laughs> he just pulled it. They hooked her right there, didn't he? Yep. Just slid past. First down and 10. He's purified. And that five-man line, Gary, is causing Colorado problems right now. A great adjustment by Craig Bull, the defensive coordinator. It also looks that now, finally, Nebraska has settled down in their defense. They're staying home. They're forcing the guy wide and trusting their running ability to run the guy on the angle instead of trying to get there too quickly. Maybe it was Nebraska this year that was too juiced up to this game like Colorado has been in the past. Now they're going to put four down. They'll walk the line back up. They set against the basic guy. And Nebraska was ready for it that time as Justin Smith makes a stop. How are the injuries down there, Jack? This is a pretty hard-hitting game. Brent, indeed it is. In Thunder College, you saw him being helped off the field. The athletic trainers have taken a look at his left ankle. They are not sure if it's a severe enough screen to keep him out of the game, but they are going to retape him and make him a question mark. You may, I repeat, may see him back in the competition. Folks, that's a report. Just a few feet away from the ankle. We can see what kind of tape they were using. Way to go, Jack. Put it down now. Hollowell comes into the slot. Pesimano's going to look in that direction. Now he's going to go back outside. Hollowell breaks beautifully. A wonderful pattern by Hollowell for the Colorado first down and neatly thrown by Pesimano for 13. Oh, see, I think it was a neat round and a wonderful pass. See, I got that's a quarterback in there, right? <laughs> Hollowell one on one to the outside with the Ricketts. And he did, came in, jitterbucked a little bit. He's the punt returner. You know it's tough to cover. He can go three directions at one time, but Pesavetto put it right there. Nowhere else. Good coverage to the outside. Hey, this ain't the here. I'm right there. There's the ball. So Nebraska walks the back off, and it is successful. Selecta, number 56, was in on that tackle. But what they've done with Burrow is they've taken him out of the middle, yes, they and they're have. starting to walk him up between the tackle and the end. And they're starting to jam up the offensive lineman. Look at that throw. Well, that's good coverage. You can't ask your corner to cover a guy all over the field much better than that. I thought it was a heck of a catch with a guy <laughs> draped all over. <laughs> they pay the big money to the guy that throws. And I swear by friend. Second down at nine. Here's a fake to Brown. Pass up in the Graham couldn't hang on. And he was muscled that time by Scott Shanley pretty good. So you give Shanley a break on that play. Shanley's got Graham all over the field, man-to-man -man coverage. Graham, when you come out and just run a little delay like that, even if it's a play-action pass, Shanley says, uh-uh, you got all those yards. Not when I'm covering you, you ain't getting all those yards. You better go downfield first. That's a tremendous job. Does so you think that was an interference, Gary? No. Do you think he was on him? No, I don't think so. Not at all, right? I, 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 the hands I, I, on his hips. I, 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 he wasn't twisting. He was, twist <laughs> <laughs> he was at the line of scrimmage. I thought he was draped all over. Third down and nine. Pesavino straight back blitz, coming through, has Graham, and he's stopping this time. Inside the 40, there's no stopping the tight end, folks. I don't know that one man can stick with number 89. Well, this time, Kelsey, number 57, comes out and drops as a defensive end. You see him right there, number 57. They tried to bait for the crossing route. It was a perfect call by Nebraska. As Kelsey, who makes the tackle, is going to come out of the game. But they were ready for it. It's just another great throw by Pesavetto. Hey, let's talk about this Graham. Four for 112. Now, you want Shockey against Mike Graham in the NFL. Or you want to, I'll, I'll let you up for half. I'll <laughs> take a both. This guy's the best senior, the other guy's the best junior. Yeah. Both pretty dang good. But I want to tell you, this kid is something. Daddy played with Dan Fonts at Oregon. Later with the Denver Broncos. He's a dandy. It's Graham. Touchdown. Oh, my. 36 more yards for Colorado. And what a huge score that is. I cannot emphasize this too much because Nebraska had scored the last two times they'd handled the football. I want to get 
a celebration penalty, I think, for Colorado. They wanted to go for two. Colorado wanted to go for two, and now I think they're going to be forced to kick the extra point. Just don't call Capo down in Dallas and ask him what to do. Oh, gee, Brent, jump on the poor guy. <laughs> hey, Gerard and Rodgers that time. The two big offensive linemen broken free for Colorado. Celebration down there in the end zone. I don't know, I don't know yeah. why it's taking so long to uh, yeah, I, I think sort it this is. thing The touchdown is good. Sure. After the play, it ended. Personal foul on Oh, no, this is, this is worse. Penalty. My apologies. The this was not a celebration. Right. Must have been a hit in the end zone or a taunting at the end zone at the end of the play. Now, Barnett is forced to go for one. The way they're running the ball, not I don't blame about them this. for going for two. Yeah, coach is not happy about this. Here's Flores. Go ahead to shoot. So here comes your 35 yard extra point. You got this one far enough. Good. See, now I like that. You waited on that one. Yeah, no, I did. You're right. I was premature on that other Same one. Same action as the play action pass, but this time, Jerome and Rogers do it. First, it went to Graham. Crossing. Third down, little pick play. Watch the other guy pick Kelsey right there. Sweeney goes in for it, and Graham just grabs it. Kelsey kind of lands on his own shoulder or hand there. Hey, Gary. Then watch the big guys here, though. Watch the two guys. You talked about them. Two great offensive linemen. Ode gets the kick out. Here comes Rodgers around, lays it out, and walk it. Why, if Shanley's aside to Graham, on that pass to Graham, did he blitz from that side? They were doing a zone blitz. Kelsey was replacing them. They were in a zone coverage. They were expecting that crossing route so they wouldn't get picked. Better execution by Colorado. Colorado knew Kelsey was coming back. They nailed it. Oh, yeah, they, was picked, dropping they picked back. the guy in the middle of the field. It's great, great coaching by Colorado. Let's check in with Jagaroo. Well, they're not surrounded by the New York firemen, Ladder Company 24, that were invited here by Gary Barnett. We'll tell you more about it after the kick. Oh, it's great to have him here, Jack. We'll come right back to you after this kickoff. 42 points put on the board by Colorado in the first half. And this time he won't bring it back to Jack. But Brian Thomas has decided to be the spokesperson for Ladder Company 24. How did this all happen, Brian? Well, a good friend of ours back in New York, Paul Keogh, asked us if we wanted to come out for the game. We've been working like crazy out there in New York, and uh, it was a nice break for some of the guys to come out. Coach Barnett found out we were coming out, got us on the sidelines. You can tell they're New Yorkers. Hey, let me you ask know? you a little bit about watching from the sidelines. You watch on TV all the time. Uh, What's the difference? Oh, it's incredible here. The fans are so intense here. They're really into the game. We're having a great time. Great time down here. Brent, they arrived at 1.30 last evening. That was about 30 minutes before last call. And they go back tomorrow, so if the Buffs should win, you're going to party. I think we're going to have a good time in honor of a lot of friends we have back in New York and friends that aren't here anymore. Thanks a lot, Jack. The screen pass, Thomas in the middle. He breaks free. Put race down for the end zone. Only one man with an angle on him. Out of bounds at the one-yard line. Robbie Robinson had the angle, stayed with him. He was the only man who could stop Thomas. That folks is a 78-yard gain, and Nebraska not backing away. Thomas goes in motion. Watch this ball gets deflected, I believe. Isn't that what happened right at it? Watch it gets tipped. Good concentration, and uh-oh, everybody's downfield. Look at those knockdowns. Thomas goes downfield. He's got a personal protector in front of him, but Robinson saves the day. In the meantime, now Nebraska, they load up. Freewald is in there. Battles touchdown. Diedrich scores for Nebraska. What did I tell you about the Flutie game? What day was it played on? Day after Thanksgiving. Yes, sir, right? my friend. And here we go again. You're begging for another one, aren't yes, you? Yes, sir. I'm begging. I'm begging. <laughs> I don't get enough air time on ESPN oh, Classic. I'm wow, begging. Here it is. Isolation play. Lead blockers. Got two big fullbacks in front of you. Diedrich with three guys in front of him falls forward and reaches across. And Nebraska, 23 points. Have they put one of this through in the first half? This time, 
Josh Brown makes it, Kevin. <laughs> How about that? I think if Frank Solich knew he was going to score 23 points in the first half, he'd have taken it. No way he dreams he gives up 42. So Diedrich, who battled into the end zone for that score, and uh, Jackaroo, we got one brewing here, my friend. Boy, Brent Dewey, and you know, part of our weekly action on the sidelines is the old You Don't Know Jack. You log on to ABC.com, as Jeff from Lincoln, Nebraska did, and he wants to know a little bit about the history of the Colorado Buffalo named Ralphie. Well, Jeff, a Buffalo did make its first appearance on the sidelines in 1934, but it wasn't named Ralphie. Ralphie made his first regular appearance in 1966. He's been on the sidelines since. This is Ralphie Four. He weighs in at 1,200 pounds. I'm not gonna try and milk him. Hey, Jack, is that, is that a male or a female? That That's Buffalo. a female, Brent. Originally named Rowdy. Huh. Should be named Rachel. All right, here's a kickoff by the Brooks. Mind everybody now coming up on the Capital One halftime show. John Saunders and Terry Bowden will have scores and highlights from college football today. They'll show you how Texas came on to the fourth quarter to beat the Aggies. They'll look at the rivalry that dates back to 1897. Ohio State of Michigan. What are you liking that Ohio State Michigan game in Ann Arbor, my friend? I like Michigan in this one. They're due to play a good game. They won a couple when they haven't played so well. I think they'll be ready to play this game. What's the deal with Steve Bellasari? Is he going to play for the... Uh, uh, I really Bucks? salute Trestle bringing him back on the team. I don't know if he'll play, but he's part of the family that deserves to suit up for the last game. Yeah, I agree. And uh, yeah, I certainly hope things work out. There it is. Most ever allowed in a half. Four two points. Colorado goes to Motion McCoy. To run back away from the motion. And again, a huge hole for the running back, Brown. Now, this is an interesting piece of strategy by Gary Barnett. Chris Brown has not been used much in their last couple of games, as you Buffalo fans are very well aware. We're saving him. We're saving him for this game. Brown is a tough inside runner, and he knew that was the kind of back he was going to need at some point against Nebraska. And remember, this Colorado team is averaging rushing for the year in a game. 214 yards rushing a game, not a half, and they're doing it against the best. Picks up four yardage, the sophomore from Colorado Springs, and he looks like he's going to be a dancer. I'm telling you, Andrew Gerard doesn't even need an agent. They just put on this tape, mail it to all the NFL teams, and watch him block. He has just been putting on a clip of opening holes, pulling, pass blocking, and everything. Barnett said that Gerard would be the first guard selected in the NFL draft. Folks, he's number 65, 6'4", 320. right there. There's Gerard, 65, getting up for the pancake, and he handled Mr. Kelsey that time with a penalty flag. Throw him back there at the 45-yard line, and there he is, number 65, Gerard, as they uh, they sort out the situation. So along with Gerard, his running mate right next to him is Rogers. He's number 71. Now, he will not be the first tackle. He could go in the first round. The first After tackle. After the play ended, personal foul on the offense. 15-yard penalty. That's twice we've had personal foul. Yes, and this is, again, Colorado has to stay within their game. It's a long football game. The penalty was not on Gerard, I don't believe. No, I don't think so either. No, it was downfield. And I'm telling you right now, Nebraska gets this ball back again. <laughs> right now, I feel they can score again. So uh, let's watch Gerard and Rodgers now as they come out. I want to say that McKinney down in Miami, folks. Yeah, he's the tank. He will be the number one tackle selected in the draft. Great and job. Like, look at this now. Here they are. Wayne Lucero, too. The center is doing an outstanding job in the most time. Now you put Graham next to those two big hulks. Now you got put it down. Well, they both pull. They leave Purify. And uh, Rodgers may have run by his man that time. He looked back like, dang it, I should have picked him up. But he was intent on getting downfield to throw a block and he may have missed the man that could have opened the way had Rodgers picked him off that yeah, time. Yeah, Fitzgerald did a nice job of running inside the big guy. That's the one advantage you have as a linebacker. You can cut inside those big guys that are pulling around the outside. Watch number nine. He reads the big guy, 
Purify doesn't do a, a great job of setting up and helping that big guy, that's a tough block for him. Yeah, it is a tough block. He's getting outside with yes, all that exactly. weight. And that's his job, leaning. too. Yeah. That's his job to get out. Nice job by Mark Mitchell. Let's check in with Jack and Rue, Jack. Well, Brett, this is a traditional Thanksgiving weekend game, so both teams have to enjoy Thanksgiving dinner. Last year, it was the Colorado Buffaloes with a weather delay that found themselves still here in Boulder when dinner was supposed to be served at their restaurant at the hotel where they were staying in Lincoln. So what does a head coach like Gary Barnett do? He dials up a local fast food hamburger chain, says, hi, I'm Gary Barnett. I need 100 cheeseburgers. I need some uh, French fries and, oh, yeah, some milkshakes. Barnett went down there on his own, gathered him up, and Thanksgiving dinner last year for the Buffaloes was Thanksgiving burgers. This year, though, Gary Barnett invited the families and the players together, and they enjoyed more traditional turkey yesterday. All right, Jack, thank you. Now, minute on the clock, and it's fourth down. Gary Barnett brought that special team over because you know, you just know that Nebraska in this situation could be storming up there at the line of scrimmage and coming after Maricel. Gross, the return man, is back. We've got one minute left on the clock in this half, and haven't we seen kicking games turn around a lot of football games this year? Out, he gets it off. The Gunners are coming down. It takes a beautiful Colorado hop and out of bounds. Gross did not move up on it. Crouch with 53 seconds here, Gary. No timeouts left, but a field goal would be huge. We're making a 16-point game, I believe. Yes, yeah, 16-point game. Look at the last three times. Eric Crouch throwing the ball better now. 139 yards passing in the half. Spreading out the offense. If they could get into field goal range, I think Frank Solich would take that. Ben Cornelson, number 81, is off to Crouch's right. On first down, the quarterback draw. Eric trying to pick his way out to the 30. That's short of the first down. Moore with the stop there, so the clock ticking down now. Crouch quickly up. They're still 70 yards away. Off to the side. Clock is stopped, and it's a first down with 27 seconds. Very smart drive so far for Nebraska. Nothing silly. You don't want to make a mistake and go in giving up more points. Like to get the ball out to about the 45-yard line going in before you really go downfield. Any try in this light air, I mean, you might be able to kick a 59, 58-yarder in this air. Remember, they have been kicking it deep into the end zone going in this direction, too. Crouch fires out the thunder again. We'll take the sideline and out of bounds at the 41-yard line, just short of that first down, but he stopped the clock with 20 seconds to go. Now, Josh Brown's longest field goal is 43 yards, so they've still got a ways to go before he can attempt anything in that range. Of course, factored in this air, 10%, and easy is 47 yards. <laughs> the first down 15 seconds and you know thunder obviously is limping as we watch him come back every time playing with that injured left ankle he has to be in there though because Darren Dietrich is not a good receiver he's only caught one pass all year Collins is the guy who catches the ball when they want to throw it and Dietrich's one catch was for minus five yards of that now you can throw the ball over the middle but it has to be enough to get a first down to stop the clock Crouch is looking middle Gibson, he's going to just set down on the first down. Ten seconds to go. Not bad, though. Still got the ball in positive territory. Probably have a chance for one more play before the field goal drop. Final seconds ticking away. Crouch has got to hurry. This looks like the last play of the half. Out. Huh. I thought Gibson got out of bounds the play before. Well, I didn't think so. Oh. Yeah, the play before. Oh, the play That's before. The clock stopped. Ah. It didn't stop. So we had the timer for Michigan State. Yeah. <laughs> and he let it roll, baby. So it's 42 23. 
Let's take it for Jack Amaru, Jack. Well, Coach, you broke to an early lead. Little by little, Nebraska's chipping back. What do you tell them? We just got to outscore them. We got to sell our defense down. We've given up too many big plays. And, uh, you know, we're playing against a great team, number one team in the country. And, you know, they're going to come out the second half and be spoken. We've got to come out and play the same intensity we had in the first half. And, Running game was pretty effective until they moved that fifth man up onto the defensive line. Right, right. Well, and then we still scored on it down here, so we know that. We'll work on it at the halftime. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. 415 yards of offense, but Nebraska answers with 335. Let's go to New York. Here's John and Terry. scored against Nebraska in any half. Colorado hangs up 42 and 415 yards. Gary Henderson got the Nebraska defense get back in this football game. Right, it won't be easy. It's not just alignment that uh, Nebraska has to change. They're getting blocked. And it's got good, good football players. I think the mismatch at tight end has caused huge problems for Nebraska. Yeah, exactly. Graham is certainly one of the best in the country, and he's demonstrated it, scoring a touchdown and going up and down the field. Colorado will get the ball to start the second half, and they'll bring it out on the 20-yard line. It's not like Colorado's come out and fooled them with some cheap touchdowns. You look at what the teams have been trying to do. Colorado, 219 yards. That's a dream come true. Look at this. 26 yards for Nebraska in their option game. Couldn't be any better for Colorado's defense. It's forced Nebraska to go to their finesse game. They've thrown the ball. They've adjusted. But when Nebraska's not good with their option, they do not play Nebraska offense. So Pesavino brings him out with Purify as his running back. And he is hit right away. John Clinton, the nose man, across. And we are joined, as I promised you, by Oklahoma head coach Bob Stoops. And tomorrow is a big one against Oklahoma State at home. Uh, coach, how shocked are you that Colorado's hung a 42 on Nebraska in the first half? Well, I tell you, it's great offensive execution. It's been impressive to watch um, Colorado really executing well. And Nebraska came back and executed uh, some very good plays, too, by the end of the half. Well, stick right with us, Coach, as we uh, talk to you here between snaps. Pesavino brings it up to the line. Ray Kelsey's blocked, and he throws beautifully underneath. Very accurately, and of course, uh, Bob, you didn't have to play Colorado. I'm wondering, your youngsters are probably anticipating a rematch. You know, that old look-ahead kid with uh, with your youngsters down there. How do you keep them focused on Oklahoma State this week? Well, it, it's been pretty easy. We understand by winning uh, tomorrow, we'll, you know, we've got a chance to lock up the Big 12 South and, and win the Big 12 South championship. So so that that is motivation. We understand that. We understand we're playing a rival school here in state. So we're real uh, looking forward to competing tomorrow. All right, Coach, here's third down. Was stopped short of the 30-yard line. So they will be forced to punt. Gary, you got a question for Coach? Yeah, Bob, you know, as a defensive coach, and I know you watch it with defensive eyes, the mix and balance that Colorado has, a quarterback that's throwing accurately and a power running game, tough to stop. You're very right, Gary. We bought, you know, I think everyone as defense uh, coaches, are, I, I've always felt that way, that a balanced offense is always more, the, uh, more difficult uh, because of the, you know, the, you know which, which is coming, the run or the pass. And, and uh, that's why even in our offense, we've continually tried to improve our running game, even though sometimes we're noted as a passing team. So Dewan Gross is uh, set to return. Low, and it'll roll dead inside the 30-yard line, and that's where Nebraska will have its uh, first possession here of the, of the second half. Uh, Coach, give us your uh, quarterback situation as you approach Oklahoma State and perhaps the Big 12 championship game. Really excited about Nate Hibble, the way he's come on the last three games. He's been completing 69% of his balls, about 840 yards, uh, eight TDs, the three interceptions, really catching a rhythm and, and excited about that. And uh, we, we haven't penciled ourselves into that. We know we got to go out and compete and do well tomorrow in order to, to get that uh, first into the Big 12 championship game. All right, Bob, here comes Crutch. Powers straight ahead. 
Bob, give us a little scouting report on Diedrich, number 30 for Nebraska. Yeah, a big, strong guy up inside. Uh, you know, when you defend Nebraska, they're as much uh, uh, finesse as they are power. Uh, they really have a number of uh, complicated blocking schemes that you continually have to read out and get in proper position. Then you have to be physical enough to compete, complete the play by tackling them once you get them in the hole. All right, here's second down and short after that nine-yard burst. Tries with a little change up at the line of scrimmage. Diedrich picks his way for the first down. Bob, what do you try to do against Eric Crouch when you're setting a defense to take him on? Well, your safeties, your cornerbacks have to be involved with linebackers. And again, getting in position with their blocking schemes, they try and outgap you and outposition you in their blocking schemes, and he knows how to read them, and you have to read them with them and get your secondary people to fill those holes uh, as he's looking for them and, and read out their blocking schemes. So here's first down for Crouch and Nebraska, just beyond the 40-yard line. Crouch is going to pull back out to the middle. Got it through behind him, Gibson incomplete. How do you evaluate Crouch as a passer, Bob? Well, he, he, he's uh, very capable. Uh, he does very well with his play action and boot passes. And, um, you know, I, I felt all year he's been better than he has been, you know, in the previous couple of years. And uh, he may be struggling just a little bit here today. But, uh, but overall, uh, he's very effective and, and uh, you know, capable of hurting you with the pass. I guess I shouldn't ask you about his talents as a receiver, huh? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he does a good job getting open and, and running with it once he has it. Second down now for Crouch and Nebraska. He's back in the shotgun. Quarterback draw. He's got an alley on the left side. First down. Coach, when your team is going well, Quentin Griffin, your running back, is getting yards. You talked about being able to throw the ball, but I think you're best when you're able to run the ball. Well, sure, Blue Ant, and we're always working to, to get better running it and always have that a part of our package. Some people insist, though, kind of like our defense tries to do that as well, insist that you're not going to be able to run it. And sometimes, even though he isn't gaining yards, he's opening up some seams and some passing yards that maybe uh, go unnoticed that, that, you know, just his presence in there sometimes still helps you on offense. So Nebraska mounting a drive is at the Colorado 47 here to start the second half. Here's Dietrich again. Made the most out of that with a strong second effort. Coach uh, Williams has had such a great year for you with that defensive backfield. Calmish, the linebacker. My goodness, you've got a lot of great defensive players on that team. Uh, we're very fortunate to work with those young men. They are. They're excellent players. They all, they, they, Rocky and Roy, uh, particularly have made some big plays in, in big games to make a difference and, and Roy in particular the plays he's made against Texas and on down the road uh, you know that have helped define our season. Second down now for the Huskers. Here's the toss play to Diedrich. Can't get his day Sometimes, Coach, it, it's not alignment, it's not X's and O's, it's just guys ready to make tackles. It looks like Colorado has come to play. Sure, they're a very good physical football team, well coached, uh, both teams are. And, and that's why, you know, the people, the media sometimes want to pencil people into championship games or even the BCS. There's a lot of games to be played. Uh, I think all of us that compete, us coaches and players, all recognize that. You have to go out and earn it every week, and we're aware of that, and, and that's why I think we're anxious to, to play tomorrow and see what we're capable of doing. Coach, I want to thank you very much for being with us. Thank Good you. luck tomorrow, and probably we'll see you in Dallas. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Well, hopefully we can earn our way there. Thank you. You got it, Coach. Bob Stoops, who's done a great job at Oklahoma. Here on third down now is Crouch. The option, the second effort, great desire by Crouch. First down across the 35. That and now our Morgan Stanley, well-connected storyline. Well, one story was right there, Crouch running over for that first down, but you can see it. Brent, it's been big plays. Almost every play has been a gash play, an explosion play for both sides. I don't think either coach would have expected that in this game. Trailing 42 to 23. And just with the doctor there for Nebraska's offense, a drive, first down, bashing drive. Thunder Collins coming to motion and running well. Play fake to him. He wanted it back. Middle diving reception by Wistrom for a first down. Now it's being waved up by the linesman. I thought Wistrom had it. I thought he caught it. The linesman did not necessarily have the best angle, but he came right after it and said it was incomplete. Coming across, this is Wistrom over here. It's bootleg action away and a throwback to Wistrom. 
fake to Thunder Collins, throw back. Wisterman does not look healthy. The ball is low, and you really can't tell if he got his elbows and hands under the ball, but very, very close. Second down and 10. Thunder Collins broke wide open off that fake over to the left side. doesn't go out of bounds easily, does he? This is a game for getting into the Big 12 championship, a chance to win the national championship. It was the quarterback, Trey Counter, right here. Watch these two guys pull this way. He lines it up, tailback offense right there. Counter Trey with a running back quarterback. I don't have time to stay with that guard. And look at that. I ain't going out of bounds. No way. Here's your first and goal after the 25-yard run. So Eric Crouch now starting to put some numbers up on the board. Collins coming out of the game. And he's hit in the backfield for a loss by Sean Tufts. You have to give Thunder Collins a lot of credit. He's been playing on a bad ankle. He's so important because he comes in as a second back but lines up as a wide receiver to give that defense a different look over and over again. Gibson, Thomas, and Wisdom check in. This is the 11th play of the drive coming up. Gibson goes off to the right, one-on-one -on -one with Strickland. Thomas is to the short side, the left of the formation. Play fake, Crouch got time, throws. This time, Wisdom hangs on at the one-yard line. Another diving effort by Tracy Wistrom. And now the Huskers are in business. They can load up with power on this one. How about all three guys doing exactly right on one play? Lewis has got Wistrom. Look at this throw. Look at this coverage. And then watch this catch. Three guys doing exactly the way the coach wanted to do it. Diedrich is lined up behind the two fullbacks. Davies and Crewell with the power. Fast enough for that man. Yeah, it, and it can't it must move have slowly sucked. enough for Solis. Right, it must have taken 15 seconds there just for everybody to unwind for that time. Here's your third down. Preston is going to put it up 
Fourth down, and now Mariscal will be forced to punt for the Colorado end zone. Kramer, one-on-one -on -one coverage. Watch him turn and look and cut off at the same time. Just enough of a peak, ball slightly overthrown, and Kramer doesn't panic and get a cheap interference call. He's got to get it out of here now. Snap the foot. That's the clock. not have 11 men on. Now they get McCoy out as one of the gunners late. Just did get it off. McPherson made a move at it. Great field position still coming up for Nebraska inside the 40-yard line. But can Nebraska finish this time? Timeout. Colorado still leads it. The young runner from Canada turned it over a couple of times. Both times, Thunder Collins has replaced him at I back. And number one is lined up there now. Crouch the quarterback. 39 yards away. Here's Collins. Thunder's to the middle. Out to the 30 yard line. We show you how we got here. Folsom Field, Boulder, Colorado. On an overcast Friday afternoon. They drove to the one, and Strickland hit Tiedrich, who was diving up over the top. And Fluellen, DeAndre Fluellen, a sophomore from Houston, makes the recovery. A very highly recruited defensive lineman. Second down. Thunder Collins with a corner. First down. 20. Out of bounds inside the red zone. Here they come again, the big red. One thing, if they could put it into the end zone, the only benefit for Colorado has been that they've been able to take some time off the clock, but it's only the third quarter. This game is still in doubt, and we saw what happened. What was it last time here? 27 to three, only the lead was the other direction. At the conclusion of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team, and Chevrolet makes a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. First down and 10. Davies picks his way to fullback inside the 15-yard line. The only thing that matters in this football game now as far as numbers are concerned would be Nebraska's ability or inability to score points. Colorado with 42 already trying to hang on. Well, they, they can't give up much more either, though, Brent. They, they, I mean, a field goal, maybe. They give up another touchdown. I don't even know if they have enough time to win their offense. They're going to go four wide, and they're going to put Wistrom slot left. He's with very good as And they are inside to the 10-yard line. So they use the power, and Harris makes the stop. That's a read for Eric Crouch there. He could have kept that ball, but Colorado staying very sound. They don't want number seven to run the ball. They're gonna let him hand off. Part of Colorado's strategy, keep the ball out of number seven's hands as much as possible. Crouch has carried 13 times for 73 yards. They are very late getting this personal package on the field. My goodness, they're inside of 10 seconds. It's third down and three. He's got two seconds, got it off, Thunder Collins. Trying to dive up for the first down. I don't know that he got it. Right Depending on when his knees yep. hit the ground and it'll be spotted. Again, Thunder Collins playing with that nicked ankle the whole game, his left ankle heavily wrapped. There you see it. That much. Here comes a huge play. Guess who's watching this carefully? Miami. Come on tonight. And our Thanksgiving feast presented by Siemens. They're going to go up against Washington. 
some of you will see the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame take on Stanford, ranked number nine in the BCS. So Nebraska loads up. You'd have to bet on Clark. Fourth down and inches. Straight out. Took the licking but got the first down. But he took some punishment in the process, and Colorado made him pay. Nebraska has controlled this whole quarter, but have yet to put points on the board. The pace needs to be quickened for Nebraska. Now they're at the six yard line. Collins stays in. Remember, they got down to the one yard line, their last possession, and Diedrich fumbled. Diving toward the end zone when the cornerback strictly hit him. Now they're at the six yard line. Here's Crouch. Turns end zone. Got it. That is touchdown number 58. More rushing touchdowns than any quarterback in history. He has now rushed for a touchdown in 10 of 12 games this year. And Nebraska closes in a little bit closer. Option play so dangerous at any time. We talked about it, that knockout punch can be delivered from anywhere on the field by number seven. And here is Josh Brown. Nailing the extra point. 12-point game, plenty of time to go. Tracy Wistrom gets a nice block on Lewis. And Rady Seven right there. Blocks down for just a count and gets on Lewis right there. Stays with him, stays with him, stays with him, and that's enough for Crouch to get the end zone. Big Red is within 12. Can Colorado hang on? Time out. Because of a personal foul after the extra point, Nebraska is backed up. They'll kick off with the 20. This is our Thanksgiving feast presented by Siemens. Continues with Colorado leading Nebraska 42 to 30. So the return, they move up to the 20 yard line and a great kick on the air. They drive it back to the nine. Colorado to the middle. Dance is outside. He's quick. Probably an illegal block in the back. Holding on Ricketts, the corner from Nebraska, who had contained. There was holding there. During the return, holding, 10 yard penalty, forcing the squad of the foul, first down. ABC Sports Presentation of College Football is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. BU, nothing's better, Dr. Pepper. Chevy. The cars you can depend on, the cars that last, will be there. Sears. Only Sears has the brands you want, the price you need. Sears, where else? And original Coors. Nothing beats an original. We're in the land of Coors here in the Rocky Mountains, the great Rocky Mountains. Up the front, they had snow up at Vail last night. The skiers are happy. I'm sure some of them are coming in off the slopes, sitting down, seeing this score. They're shocked. Colorado scored 42, 42 in the first half. Most points scored in any half ever, ever, against the Big Red. And now the Buffaloes settle in. Pesanetto, they've been three and out twice. Kelsey got him, incomplete. And Kelsey had chased him inside the five. 57 makes an appearance here in the second half and let us check in with Jack. Well, as you guys have been saying upstairs, the time is clicking down for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. On the Colorado side offensively, what they want to do is see a quicker break out of the huddle. They want more time on the play clock so Bobby Pesavento can make some calls and some judgments at the line depending on what type of defense he sees. What they told Pesavento is they want more tempo. Run the clock down, but more tempo at the line. Cornell and as a wide receiver. up inside the 15-yard line by Mark Fedro, a different Nebraska defense coach, has shown up this half. Where were these guys earlier? Fedro that time again comes in with his speed. Kelsey took the play on him that time, though, Brent. Bounced it outside, and then the speed can run. Coming this way, it's a little bit of counteraction, but watch Kelsey take on the pulling guard. He takes it on, and then the bounce out. That allows the speed of the Nebraska linebackers to make the play. Instead of getting gashed up the front, up the middle, they're forcing that run wide. Ricketts 
Checks out and look for the package. Third down and long. Pressing that hard. Holloway breaks. Couldn't hang on to Ricketts in pursuit. And they are forced again to punt it away. And we check in with John Saunders in New York. John. Brent here on the Burger King update. LSU against Arkansas. Rowan Davey, 37 yards to Josh Reed. Reed now with 1,494 yards receiving. That's an SEC record. They win it 41-38. And next week, LSU faces Auburn to find out who's the champion in the SEC West. A change here for Nebraska. Two punt returners, something they'll go to if they punt away from the main man. Carlson and Grossetti. Norris Kell pounds it. Gross fumbles. They can't advance it. It's down right there, but he coughed it up. Yeah, but it'll be a halo, and they'll get the ball back. Gross coming up to make the catch, and the Colorado player forced the fumble. My goodness. So here will be the announcement. Interference with the opportunity to catch the kick on the kicking team. Non-contact foul. Five yards penalty. First down. You can see the defender right there, clearly within the two-yard hail. No question. So it will be Nebraska's football. I'm out. Gary, total domination by Nebraska so far this quarter. He really has three, three and outs. The offense for Colorado must continue to go because Nebraska's offense is rolling. Thunder Collins stays in. And he reaches the 37 in our Pacific Life game summary. And Eric Crouch has reached another milestone. He now has 1,034 yards rushing this season. He is only the 13th Division I quarterback to rush and pass for a thousand yards in a single season and he has scored again today that is 58 career rushing touchdown and eric crouch trying to keep this drive going nebraska down 12 points well defended that time let's go to jack and Luke. Well, Brent, when you look at a momentum game, you look for someone to spark an emotional uplift. This man, Thunder Collins, has done precisely that on the sidelines. Each time that the Nebraska Cornhuskers defense has been out, Collins has been walking up and down the sidelines, trying to get the entire team wound up. He may be playing hurt, but his leadership qualities are beginning to come out. Third down and nine. formation and they're going to throw out of it flag no Gibson was hit by Sneed the corner from Mesquite Texas ball was slightly behind that time would have been a very tough play Sneed came in and cleaned it up perfectly that time but Crouch threw it behind the receiver it has come to fourth down no need to do anything but putt right now. A lot of time in this football game. Here's Larson talking to his center. So far here today, Garrison has delivered the ball perfectly. As he does again. Angled away from the a beautiful punt that time. Well, Sunday night, Brian Urlacher and the Chicago Bears will need to tame NFC Central rival Minnesota to remain atop the division. Sunday night football, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Bears and the Vikings. Chicago on the comeback this year. Surprised a whole lot of folks, haven't they? As Colorado has shocked everybody here today, but they're under fire now. Remember what Gary told you. Three possessions, all three and out. And no field position here either. That's a minute of throw on first down. Not noted as a scrambler. It's open. First down. Pesavano takes it out at the 29-yard line. 
And there you got to give him a lot of credit, the senior on that play. Well, he didn't have much choice for that 22-yard scramble. Stayed in there because his two crossing receivers bumped into each other. He wanted to go to Graham that time. And yes, stayed in the pocket, stayed calm, and then scrambled up for a huge play, a huge first down. Watch, it's crossing Grimes, trying to pick for Graham. Boom! They run into each other, and there's no option but to run. Chris Brown, the power back for Colorado, and another first down, and here they come again. Four different tailbacks in their career have run over 100 yards in a single game. Chris Brown did it against Colorado State, 21 carries, 121 yards, and he has come through as that change-up back because Johnson has been injured. Purify in as the running back. He's behind Pesanella. To the 40-yard line before Shanley makes the stop. 18 more yards. And let's go back to what Terry Bowden said at the intermission. Where are all the safety? Where are the safeties? Where are the defensive alignment? They run right up the middle right here. Safeties. Here's a safety back here. Here's a safety back there. Look at that gash. That's a gash against that defensive line. First down at the 41-yard line. He picks up a couple of yards. Talking about the safeties, Philip Bland, who would have been a starter at strong safety today, out of the state of Colorado, is injured and not able to do anything about this. Yeah, you really don't expect your safeties to be stopping the ball in the middle right here. You can go eight-man fronts, but those defensive linemen have to help you, and those linebackers have to help you stop those plays. That offensive line for Colorado is winning this football game. Back with it after this message and award by ABC stations. One quarter to go. Colorado leading Nebraska by 12 points and with the football. In the last two games here at Boulder, Colorado has outscored Nebraska 38 to nothing in the fourth quarter. But remember, in the last one played here, they surrendered the winning touchdown in overtime after missing a field goal that would have won it. So Pesavino comes out now for second down. Pesavino steps away, hit on a delivery, juggling complete. Gross almost picked it off on the juggle. Cormier, the intended receiver. Pedro and Kelsey had good pressure on Pesavento that time. Getting back in the cut in the thing. Here comes these guys from this side. Number nine right in the middle. He gets in the, in the pile. Watch him get inside right there to put pressure. The ball slightly behind. And that one by Gross could have been picked up. They are taking Booker out in third down situations. The safety is the fourth leading tackler who has only one stop today has been coming out. Here it is now, third down. Pesavino in trouble. Neatly steps away. There's a good man in Kipley. Oh, he had Brunson wide open. There's a penalty flag, however. Hollowell was the intended receiver, and a flag was thrown. I think he might have been trying to go to Matt Brunson, number 15, and he badly overthrew it. Pass interference on the defense. Accident penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Hollowell was the guy who got held trying to come back for that ball. Pesavetto waved to Brunson, then he was open. Let it run right here. Pesavetto gets pressure, and when he comes out, I think he's trying to go to the guy who fell down on the play. 
Right here is who I think he's trying to go to the ball to. That's Brunson. He badly overthrows it to him to a wideout guy. The ball sails, but way back here is where the holding play goes. Wow. Not even throwing the ball, and they get an interference call. And we've got Lucier, the center, injured at the 45-yard line, number 78, the transfer from Northwestern. And he has played a whale of a football game, oh, yes. along with Rogers, Gerard, Page, and Bates in that offensive line. And Brent, a little hidden stat about success for a team. They've had the same five starters for every game this year for Colorado. Now, Gerard, number 65, the big guard, has played center in the past. Looks like they're going to come in with Ryan Gray. Now, Schlechta also had to come off with an injury. Now they have Booker lined up at a cornerback, Nebraska, and he's going to chase the fullback on first down. Straight ahead with Brown and Booker trying to hang on. And he made more yards. Booker couldn't bring him down. He's inside the 10 yard line. That's 15 yards. Again, that blocking on the offensive line. Look at this gas play again coming right at you. Get a sprint right, right through. Look at that. This. this is against Nebraska. You don't even see anybody in the picture here till this. Chris Brown gets into the secondary, and Booker, who's playing man-to-man -man coverage, comes in and has to hold on for dear life. Brown comes in at nose tackle for Nebraska. They motion that fullback again to keep Booker on the run. Purifying the touchdown. And he slipped through close to the five-yard line. That was Shanley trying to bring him down. What we have seen is that the big red defenders have been unable to make the stop with the first hit. And Colorado slipping very close to that five-yard line. It'll be second down. Now, remember what Coach Barnett told us. We want to try to tire them down in the first quarter. We're playing at altitude. It's a very emotional game. We want to wear away at it. Brown in the backfield. Play fake Pesimano. He's played a whale of a game. He threw this one away. Penalty again in the end zone. It's on Gross, I believe. Gross and Hollowell are checked out. It was Gross and Brunson, I think, were locked up in the end zone. The ball was thrown away, but it might have been a holding call on the play. Holding on the defense on an eligible receiver before the pass is thrown. Penalty is half the distance to the goal line. Automatic first down. Ryan Bingham checks into the goal line. You can, you can run the ball. Watch these offensive linemen go this way. Slow one way, little play action pass, get it into the end zone. And he just had to throw it away. There was no one open right there, but they called the holding into the end zone, and that was pretty obvious. Bobby Pesavento has played a whale of a football game, has not made the big mental mistake, has stepped away from trouble, has thrown the ball after him. toward the end zone, and he was just short of it. It'll be down to the one-yard line. It'll be second down and goal. He slipped on that one, or he could have scored easily. Nice one-two combination with Purify and Brown. Great game plan from Gary Barnett to keep two big, healthy backs to go north and south against this Nebraska team. No one has ever tried it. No one has thrown this type of a game plan against Nebraska all year. Do you think that they wouldn't want to saddle up behind Rodgers and Gerard here yep. for a second and goal? Numbers 71 and 65. And Colorado puts a big six up on the board here in the fourth quarter. A full down block, and then they're going to bring Gerard around. Same play that they scored on earlier in this football game. Block down, block down, and bring the big guy. That's good power football. Here's Corey's now for the Houston nails it and so today Chris Brown the transfer from Northwestern has scored four touchdowns timeout
Folsom Field, and look at the elevation, folks. 5,300 feet right now, and it could be wearing a little bit. This is a key play when Deepak tried to get over the top from the one-yard line. He fumbled. Nebraska was dominating. After that, they were able to score. They cut it to 12. Then Colorado took over and calmly cut up the Cornhusker defense again. For the day, 494 yards of offense. 494 for the Buffaloes. Standing back, deep is Josh Davis. Line drive, it'll have to come out on the 20 yard line. And Brome has done so well with those kickoffs. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler are bringing you ABC Sports presentation to college football. BU, nothing's better, Dr. Pepper. Dodge, you can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns, Dodge. Beachwood Age Budweiser with the crisp, clean, and refreshing taste known only the king of beers and Circuit City. We know how you feel, that's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you. Nebraska will start having to get in and out of the huddle quicker now. Down 19 points and the two touchdowns. The flag is throttled. Illegal substitution on the offensive team. Breaking the sideline, huddle with 12 players. Five-yard penalty. I thought I saw the substitution come on the sidelines with their uh, package, but they must have uh, broken out of that huddle with too many. Everybody does it. There's 12 or 13 people in the huddle, but if you take a step towards the field, you can call. First down at 15. But... Collins on a screen to the 21 yard line and a pickup of two after all that, huh? Nebraska needs to get into a hurry up mode. They can't allow now for these 10 and 12 seconds between each play, standing around figuring out what play. They need two touchdowns, they need two extra points, going probably for two both times. I think they should be in their no huddle already. Second down and nine. Crouch looking for Gibson. And he went down. Incomplete. The coach is on the Nebraska sideline. Won an interference. Gibson went down. He was the intended receiver. And he caught his legs, I believe, with Strickland that time. I think it was Strickland. Both guys are limping on the play. He's running a post corner coming in and out. Gibson, number eight, comes inside, trails Thomas, and as he comes back out, kind of just blows a tire. I don't know if he tripped over anybody. Personnel substitution of four players right now with a uh, Strickland injured player, limping. Strickland, yeah, down. He, he was limping. I, I thought maybe he caught his toe or foot with Gibson, but obviously he just blew a tire himself. So we'll take a break. 11.56 to go. Time out. ABC Sports. Thanksgiving feast. Presented by Siemens. Continues from Boulder, Colorado. For the Buffaloes, upsetting the top-ranked team in the BCS standings. Third down and ten. Crouch to the middle. Penalty flag. First down, but there is a penalty flag on the play. From the linesman's call, it's usually holding on an end man in the line of scrimmage. I think Justin Bannon, number 97, got held on that play. Bannon, who they wanted 10 plays from, is still in there in the fourth quarter of the football game. Time starting to run down on Crouch's dream, which was to win a national championship. But to have a shot, they would have to win this game and again next Saturday night in the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship in Irving, Texas. Only 11.49 left. Third and 
team. Thomas is the motion man. Play fake. Intercepted by Lewis. Lewis at the 20, 15, 10, out of bounds, inside the 10, and that could be the knife in the heart. Nebraska was forced to gamble. Third and long, they had to go for the first down, throwing into the teeth of the zone. Very, very difficult for this offense to do. I think this is Lewis right here. We're going to get a crossing route and watch him watch the quarterback on the play. Lewis playing safety. He stays back. He stays back, and he sees that crossing route right there, and he watches the quarterback and cuts across to make the play. Emotional, a leader, and smart. Great combination. Chris Brown. We're bringing the play clock down. Game on the offense, five-yard penalty, first down. That'll cost them five on the game clock now. 11:38. Barnett in Colorado, leading by 19. And there are such huge implications, not only here, but all around the country as far as the BCS is concerned. Folks, this could be heartbreak hotel for Brigham Young. And we will show you as the rest of this game unfolds. It is now first down, backed up to the 13-yard line. Here's the toss play to Brown. Breaks a tackle, touchdown! Touchdown! That's five for Chris Brown. The young man from Naperville, Illinois. The Buffaloes are going to Texas, no doubt about it now. Touchdowns from Chris Brown in a football game and putting over 300 yards rushing on this football team, Nebraska, today. So Chris Brown goes for the record. Five touchdowns. And they will go for two. The number sequence says you go for two. Intercepted live ball. Booker will be thrown down in the end zone by Graham. And that is the first horrendous pass that Pesavento has thrown all day long. But they will take it because Colorado still leads it. 55 to 30. Chris Brown ran right through Jeremy Schleck, the number 56 this time. Takes the toss. Big number 56 is right there. The nose tackle runs right through the nose tackle to score a touchdown. A 25-point lead by a 10-point underdog. This is one, folks, that the odds makers blew off the map. They were so wrong on this guy, it was unbelievable. It'll come out on the 20. I'm going to take it to the BCS. Oklahoma, folks, can get back and defend its title. Oklahoma now must handle Oklahoma State at home and then win the Big 12 championship, and now they will be in the driver's seat for Pasadena. Florida still has a chance to get there. Oregon needs some help. Now your middle five teams. They all need a lot of help. These teams, of course, can get the BCS Bulls. Illinois trying to get there. But go to the next five. Here's today's story. Colorado is 15. With this win, they figured a move ahead of BYU. BYU had to finish at least 12th to be eligible for an invitation in the Fiesta Bowl. This is not what the Cougars wanted here today. First down and 10 now for Conchon. Shotgun formation, down this many points. Still not in a hurry up mode. Not a no huddle mode, but they're in a little bit of a hurry up mode. It's been a disaster for the defense that usually prides itself in being able to stop the run. Gary, a great name, has checked in for the injured stripper. 
Jones. It's going to be first down for Nebraska. And first, let's tell you about this Monday nighter. And it's going to be a dandy. The Buccaneers and the Rams. Both don't get any better than that. Except can you stop the Rams against St. Louis? And Tracy Wistrom's brother, Grant, this will be a defensive end for the Rams. Their odds on right now to win the NFC. Terrence Wood, 23, goes to the right side of the defense. Here's the young man. Crouch trying to get at him. Deflected incomplete. And Thomas had a blanket thrown on him by Wood, number 23. And folks, Terrence Wood is the grandson of one of the greatest NFL defensive backs ever. Willie Wood played on the first two Super Bowl championship teams with the Green Bay Packers. What a heritage. And here is young Terrence now in for the injured Strickland at corner. He's worked his way up to a nickel back in the third corner, obviously on this football team. Joy Johnson, nice block of that pass by. Second down. High and incomplete. Carlos of the target. And now it's time for our Pacific Life game summary. It's been a couple of fumbles, turnovers it cost. It started out the second half, Nebraska trying to get in this football game. But then this one a little later, last gas, third and 20. And that set up the last touchdown by Chris Brown, his fifth of the game. Brett, never thought I'd say that. Especially against the Big Red. That's the game Pesavino's played. He's our MVP. Got to give it to him. Calm, cool, collected. And so much improved from the time we saw him. Third down. Intercepted. Picked off by Jerry Johnson. Inside the 35 yard line. Sean Tufts was right there to get that thing, and Johnson gets the rebound. Coming across to Gibson. Gibson says, I think I'm covered on this one. Watch Tufts come into picture right there, charge it loose. Johnson grabs it and boy oh boy. Fourth turnover of the game for Nebraska. It's hard to believe. Four turnovers in the game, but that's really not the story of the game. 507 yards of offense. Yes, exactly. Of I think so. 305 carry, rushing, most allowed by Nebraska since 1954 against Oklahoma. It's going to be a sad return to Lincoln for Frank Solich and the Cornhuskers tonight. If I could give an MVP to also, I'd give it to that offensive line for Colorado. They were magnificent in this game. Yes, they were. But the leader and the difference has been passing out, replacing the injury in three goals. Brian, can he get number six? And we asked Pesavento about his improvement as the Buffalo quarterback. Just getting more uh, developed in this offense and just figuring out, you know, how simple this offense really is and just finding check downs and just taking what the defense gives me. And I think that's what's led to, you know, having a good percentage. I'll tell you one team that will be paying attention tomorrow, the Sooners of Oklahoma, having watched what happened to Nebraska here today. They know they cannot look beyond to the Big 12 championship game and next Saturday night. They've got to attend the business first. And then worry about this suddenly dominant team. It comes Brian again. Touchdown. Six. Six touchdowns for Brown. There will be no losing on the final play today. They took care of business early. They did not let this one come down to the closing minutes. And if you're looking for the coach of the year on the Big 12, folks, he's on the Colorado sideline. 
they lost to Fresno State, and the Riders in this state want to run it right back to Northwestern. But this team hung together, and in their biggest game of the year, they put a 62 on Nebraska. And this guy used to play for Northwestern. <laughs> he came with Gary. Good move. Your heart just goes out to that young Nebraska fan. And I have not changed my opinion today of Nebraska fans in football. They're some of the greatest fans in the world. They'll be back, young man. Don't worry about it. There's a lot of Nebraska fans that would like to do that. They're just a little older right now. Ever. 62. Colorado put on him here today. We got more. ABC Sports Thanksgiving Feast presented by Siemens continues tomorrow. Ohio State takes on Marquise Walker in Michigan. Then at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, it's that highly anticipated rematch of number 11, Washington, and number 2, Miami. Some of you will see Notre Dame take on number 9, Stanford. And ball foul, personal foul on the return team. 15 yard penalty, first foul. Troy Hassebrook. Just a late, cheap shot showing his frustration at the end of the game. That's the second one Nebraska's had here late in this fourth quarter. What a week this has been for Colorado. Statsman George Hill reminds me that earlier this week, Colorado won its first ever men's NCAA cross-country title. They beat Stanford by one point. I believe that was down in Georgia. So congratulations to the cross-country team. And as hard as it title. is to believe, the Colorado offense actually ran further than it. Swarm all over. 923. If time permits, stay tuned for the Thrifty Carmelo Post Game Report featuring scores and highlights uh, from across the country. So so many storylines here. Uh, Gary, what uh, what hits you uh, well, right off the top of this game? What hits me two things. Is first of all, something always happens in November and December in these things, don't they? You said that this morning. I, I said somebody's going to lose. Who is it going to be? Nebraska today, and I don't know if we're done yet. Number two is, it looks like Eric Crouch, he does not have the great statistics anyway, is probably looking at a Heisman that's just going to slip through his fingers. He had to win them all, I believe, Did and you? I think now he's probably out. Did you tell me that he's on the cover of Sports Illustrated this week? He is. Wow. Huh? Real big picture. Real nice picture. <laughs> oh, he's such a fine young man. And uh, the injured player is Michael Lewis. Michael Lewis, who's been one of the stars here today, shaken up and... Uh, and helped up, but I can't tell you folks through the years because I doubt that we'll do another. Well, I shouldn't say that. We don't know. Nebraska would still be a candidate for the uh, for the Fiesta Bowl, depending on what happens. You bet right. they would be. I, but I was going to point out how how good it is to deal with the Nebraska and Eric Crouch in particular. How generous he is with his time for all the media people when they uh, when they show up. And they, of course, he, he was dreaming of the national championship. He kept saying the national championship is to keep going. Here he is to the 20 yard line. You know that, folks, let's take you back to the last time that Colorado ever won. It was Lincoln and Eric B. Enemy. He was the star running back. He fumbled five times in that game. But in the fourth quarter, B. Enemy scored four touchdowns, covered a total of only 11 yards. And that was the last time you go back to 1990. A team won a share of the national championship. Now the running backs coach. You know who his position coach was that day, folks, in Lincoln? Gary Barnett. And he's the link. The last time he was here, they won. He comes back this year, they win. Third down to one, and what a job he's done with these running backs. Crouch breaks free. 40 yard line, 50. Crouch looking for daylight, comes down the sideline. He'll get pushed out of bounds at the 10 yard line. Gary Crouch said, not so fast, Mr. Danielson. Don't count me out that quickly. That's 70 yards for the score. Second year in a row, Eric Crouch has put over 100 yards rushing and 100 yards passing on this Colorado team. But in this game, Colorado says, okay, nice job, nice run. Doesn't hurt as bad as last year. He's 
such a threat, but today, when it mattered, early in this football game in the first quarter, Nebraska could not free him. A thousand yards plus of offense here today. The difference? Colorado's been able to close. 62 And he slams his way to the six-yard line. There's our elevation. Talked about that Nebraska had to save some fuel for the fourth quarter. Well, it didn't really matter. They didn't really need it. The game was over at almost the start of the fourth quarter when Colorado scored that first touchdown. That really broke the, broke the back of this Nebraska team. I think Pesavento's scramble really changed the game out of the end zone. Option, Bart, second touchdown of the game. Scored more rushing touchdowns than any quarterback in history. He now has 59. Option left side. You're going to see the lead back. Just go outside. They take the pitch away up here. Goes into the end zone. He doesn't kind of dance around. He just says, uh, uh, lower the shoulder, walk in here. Going to have to go for two. Seven fourteen to go. And they go for two here. They load the power line. Deep with the eye back. Dodge keeps it. He's gonna be short. Ninety-eight points put on the scoreboard here today. An arousing performance so far. by a 10-point underdog. <laughs> so next Saturday night, you'll see these Buffaloes again in the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. It'll be Colorado against either Oklahoma or Texas. If OU handles Oklahoma State tomorrow in Norman, They'll be there against Colorado, and wouldn't that be a great matchup with Oklahoma's defense against this Colorado offense? Well, you wouldn't want to miss that one, folks. And what will Gary Barnett come up with against that defense? How about just more of the same? You can run the ball, you can throw the ball to the tight end, you've got a quarterback that is as accurate as Pesavento has been. I like that against any defense, especially that tight end. If something should happen to Oklahoma, then, of course, Texas, which came on in the fourth quarter to put away the tough Aggies today, down at Texas A&M, they would be the representative of the South. At any rate, I've been there, covered several of them, and it's always a great event, the Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game. They're going to play this one at Texas Stadium. Here's the pooch kick fielded at the 30-yard line. Well, Gary, here is the Dodge Drive summary. Last three times, you see Colorado. I said they needed to score. They did it. That 93-yard drive when Pesavento came out of his own end zone on the scramble, I think was the key play of this half. Remember, Graham bumped into each other, came in, but three straight touchdowns because they were getting tired on defense. Gets into the end zone. Nobody there. It was not a designed play. Pesavento says, I got to do it. I come out. And that really opened up everything for this Colorado team. First down and 10. And here is Brown. We check in with Jack Aru, Jack. Brown, when you look at Bobby Pesavento's numbers, six foot five, 230 pounds, you would think that the NFL would be lusting for this young man. But they really don't project him being a real NFL prospect, maybe as a free agent. That has bothered Bobby Pesavento. And when I talked to him before the start of the game, he said, I've known since I was given the nod as the starting quarterback here that this game was going to be my opportunity to showcase my abilities to NFL scouts. He said, it's the day after Thanksgiving. They don't play until Sunday. There's going to be a lot of people in the NFL watching me today. I think he's proven his point. Absolutely, Jack. 6.25 to go. Here's the top of the hour. It's the running back, Brown, who scored six ties for Colorado. 
For those of you who have just joined us as we run a few minutes over, that score is accurate. 62 to 36. Nebraska going to call a timeout here. And uh, their chances for a national championship have evaporated here this afternoon in Boulder, Colorado. The young man who transferred from Northwestern, Chris Brown, has scored six, counted six touchdowns for Colorado here today behind an awesome offensive line. Rogers, Gerard, Lucier, Hayes, and Bates blew open the holes, and Chris Brown, who was rested for this game, did the rest. Don't forget Bobby Purify also. He started that game out with that long run. He also went over 100 yards in this football game. Two backs over 100 yards. Brown was late, but Purify had a tremendous start of this football game. At first drive, he picked up the blitz with Nebraska so good at it, and the next play, they pop him for the touchdown. He got him off and rolled. Well, the numbers are just incredible here today. 530 for Colorado. And um, the Colorado offense dashes onto the field here to bring down the last 613 of this game. Brown looking for more, folks. Looking for more. There's a late penalty flag thrown by the back judge. Same play that Colorado used on the goal line to score three touchdowns. They come with it and they say, listen, they haven't stopped us all day. Let's just pull Gerard around and run Chris Brown behind him. This is Barnett's third year at Colorado. In year four at Northwestern, the Wildcats rose from the ashes and went to the Rose Bowl. He came in here and said return to dominance. The was still in when he was hit there. Swear there's no personal foul for a hit out of bounds. Disregard the play. But a year ago, Colorado had bitten off a schedule that was too tough for Barnett. And Colorado was buried. And people began to question whether or not he could turn the show around in Bowling. I think Gary Barnett and his coaching staff have proven here today that they indeed could turn around the program here in Boulder and the return to dominance is this afternoon with another penalty flag and purifying in as the running back. Here is Colorado a year ago from three and eight to eight and two and about to become nine and two and play for the first time for the Big 12 championship. And with what we've seen here today, I wouldn't count them out of that game either. They, they can play with anybody. They're not, you know. Brent, you mentioned the theme that Gary Barnett said. I want to return to dominance for Colorado football. He worked for Bill McCartney. He left. He came back. It's been returned to respectability. But until he beat Texas, Oklahoma, or Nebraska, it really wasn't return to dominance. Today, I think you can say that Oklahoma football is back, and they've got a lot of good players coming back next year. Including Craig Oates, their best football player, quarterback, didn't even play this game. However, they lose three first round draft choices. And that always shows up, no matter what anybody says, folks. Those two offensive linemen and Graham are going to be gone. Jack Root Strickland was hurt. They're going to need even a Big 12 title game. What do you hear down there? Well, Brent, the latest we've been told is a preliminary uh, diagnosis is not good. It's a torn hamstring. Uh -oh. They will have to investigate a little further after this game to be ter to determine just what is whether well, it's a torn or strained hamstring. And that's their best corner. And when you talk to the people about Colorado, if they said we're short one guy. We're short maybe one corner, and they've lost their best one. Now they may be short two corners. And one other point, here's the toss play to Purify. And he sees broke the tackle and made his way to the foot. One other point about Strickland, folks. When Nebraska appeared to have momentum going all its way in the third quarter, remember it was number four who came up over the top and hit deeper and charred the ball loose as Deaver was attempting to vault into the end zone. The young man made one of the biggest plays of this game. Good point, and that was on first down and goal, too. You know, they have to 
matchup against Oklahoma, Brett, with all those receivers that are already short and formal, it's a tough matchup. Nine, one, 99, Third down. Still a little bit short. The final four minutes. Now here is the play. And it was indeed a key play. There is number four coming in underneath and jarring the ball loose. Llewellyn with the recovery for the Buffaloes. And now the young man may not be able to play in the championship game because of that hamstring. That's just a tough, tough break. Do you run the play again? Do you run the play over here? Same play they've been doing. They're in that formation. You block down, run to the right, pull number 65 right here. Give it to Drum. <laughs> Down. There's the play again. And he broke the tackle Brown inside the 30-yard line. He's been unstoppable. Broke the same tackle he did for the touchdown. Jeremy Schlechter is in the set backfield. Number 56, same play all day. Lock down, pull around, big nose tackles there. Schlechter, number 56, runs right through it. And Brown, too strong in this game for this defense. Now you gotta look at Brown trying to go for 200. I know someone set up here, he's only 16 yards away. on first down. You know, I got a moment here, so let me let me thank a lot of folks, and uh, especially our entire crew, those who spent their Thanksgiving away from their families and here with us to, to bring you this football game. We can't tell you how much we appreciate the efforts of everybody. Executive producer of ABC Sports is Howard Katz, the coordinating producer of ABC's College Football, and the producer today, Bob Goodrich. Our director is Larry Cam, the TD, the technical man, Monty Volan. The associate producers, Mitch Green, the associate director, Brian Fay. One second down here, now in 12. to the 25. And uh, some more folks, uh, the director of production for us, Bob Toms, who does an outstanding job. And our production assistants who are on top of their game, Kurt Thomas and Tim McDermott. The computer statistician, and happy anniversary to him and his wife, Anthony Holman from Big Day. Home game next week. Our technical manager, Mark Towey. Our production manager, what a great job she did arranging for the special Thanksgiving dinner last night. Christy Bravey and telecommunications. Jeff Caius, George Hill at the stats, Brian Mobison, back from Maui and Tam, and on top of his game is our spotlight. Third down here. For Brown and uh, he's just had an unbelievable day so no surprise today's Chevrolet players of the game and number 22 is certainly one of them Chris Brown who's now rushed for 198 yards and six touchdowns he is two yards short he wants out, but they're telling him he's two yards short from the two headings. I can go. I can go. Give me, just give me a breath here. Just one breath. <laughs> and on the other side, we're going to go with Eric Crouch. Played his heart out. Didn't work out right. Colorado jumped him early. He had 162 yards rushing and two touchdowns. That's a pretty good day's work for a quarterback. Purify, replacing Brown. You know, on, on the depth chart, Chris Brown is listed fourth string. Can you imagine that? Portland Johnson, Marcus Houston, Bobby Purify ahead of him. And this guy's your number four? Well, folks, there you have it. Now, there is uh, just, just so we make sure that you understand that that young man was not strictly over there, but this one is on the uh, on the sideline and so Strickland and uh, hopefully he will be able to come back what a great play he made today keep playing the game so there we have it just a huge upset 62 points for Colorado Gary Barnett beats Nebraska and the goalpost on the left side is down already it didn't take him but seconds 
And I'm sure the one on the right is going to come down too. One goal post down, and folks, that's about the quickest I've ever seen. And let's go down to Jack and Ruth. Coach, what can you say? Congratulations. You said, uh, well, you know, we thought, thought we'd play like this. We didn't know it'd end up like this, but, uh, you know, our guys have just believed they want to go to Dallas, and uh, we found a way to get there, I guess. Back at the beginning of the season, the upset at the hands of Fresno State, this team got together in the locker room, and you pulled together as a group. Yeah, there's no question that uh, that was a big game, but we were a good team going into that game, and we were a good team coming out, and we just didn't let it bother us, you know, and we just hung together and overcome injuries. And, you know, and tonight we just played our best. It's a good thing it's a Friday game. You can let them have 24 hours to celebrate. <laughs> now you're going to go up against Oklahoma. That's all right. We'll worry about them later. Sunday. Congratulations, Coach. Yeah, Oklahoma, if they win, if they don't, if they lose too, then it'll be Texas. Once again, our final score, Colorado 62, Nebraska 36. Can you believe it? ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com, keyword ABC Sports. Don't forget, more college football tomorrow. This is ABC Sports, continuing the tradition of excellence. So long, everybody, from Boulder, Colorado. The party is underway.